Um, I wanted to start this stream out and do it on like a lighthearted note. So I picked I picked uh, the best information about Vito that most people I really want them to know. I don't care if you know, it's funny. If you don't know, it's funnier. So let's let's watch this. It's from PKA. There's a couple versions of this I could direct you to. But yeah, a, a Mega let's go Man with PKA. Legend sequel. Pink the, uh, already. We talked talked about the comics and everything. I yes. There was a little lore from last time I was on the biggest problem that I just had to explore more. Dick was was poking fun at you for having relieved your cat sexually. <laughs> Not sexually. Well, and, I guess it is sexually. And I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted you to go through that. Like, what was your rationale, and how long did it get? How long did it take you to make the cat come? Yes, you you did not hear that wrong. He definitely, uh, he very, uh, mm, this he, <laughs> he he brought very 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 cursed lineage to the Q-tip. I'll I'll say that. I don't want to ruin this for anybody, but yeah, he uh, he definitely he got his cat off. So, <laughs> yeah, let's let's see how uh, let's see how Vito works that pussy. Okay, so for, shut up. First of all, this was like uh, this was like ten years ago. Yeah, and no statute I, of limitations on that one, my friend. There is a statute of limitations. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. For my cat, my he cat was in is. heat, and my cat because I was an idiot. I took too long to get my cat fixed, mm -hmm. and I had a job at the time that I had to wake up very early and get to my job. And my cat would not shut the fuck up and I could not sleep. I was just like all night. Argh, argh, and I was like, okay, I'm going to get, I had an appointment to get the cat fixed in like two weeks or whatever. To I be honest, like, I'm on the cat side with this. I've been there. <laughs> I went online. I went online. I said, how do you calm a cat in the heat? And I found a page and this is a real procedure that multi that multiple pages will tell you you can do this is an actual thing they said he, but he trusted the google veterinary clinic <laughs> let i digress well the thing anyone about can cats... access it with onion.tor <laughs> like no, 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 no. <laughs> they said the thing about a cat is that a cat can have an orgasm in about two seconds so just take a q-tip get it like a little wet with water and just put it gently against the back side of your cat your cat will back up onto it have an orgasm in about two seconds and then we'll shut up for a week. And I said, okay, I don't want to do it, but I feel like this is the only way to regain some sanity. This is the only version I've ever heard of him sit here and say, I didn't want to do it. <laughs> the other version, he'd never said that part in my life. So I took a Q-tip and I, I, yes, I got my cat off. You yeah, penetrated. I, the first thing you noticed was like, you were out of Q-tips. And your cat's, <laughs> your cat's a boy or a girl. I'm just. This was a girl cat. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> what would I do with a boy cat in a Q-tip? Stick it up its ass. I, I, I was, it's, Fuck! It's my like... cat's been playing me for a fool. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you like painted it or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh no! I'm not jerking the cat off with a Q-tip. No. Oh, oh, that's below you, right? <laughs> it's below me. Frankly, that's too much. Uh, Look, I'll say this. I do not regret it. Whatever. Uh, that was a... Uh, he does not regret getting his cat off. That was a medical procedure that Bullshit. I expertly performed. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, basically an Let's act. get the language right for court. You penetrated the feline. About what time was it? <laughs> Hold on. Care? There's guys whose <laughs> the entire... witching hour. There are guys <laughs> whose entire job is to jerk off champion racehorses. Is that no. a problem? No. That's an acceptable medical procedure. This was me. An animal was in distress... An animal was in pain, and I relieved that pain with a simple Q-tip. If anything, I'm the hero of this situation. I mean, with that, I mean, helped... you... this is this is him after having to tell this story multiple times, and getting shit on. This is probably his most like, okay, now I've actually got to start spinning the narrative on this a little better. But you that put animal. aside insecurity in order to help an animal. If we That's choose right. to accept that framing. Of the, of the situation and yeah. if you've ever seen a cat have an orgasm it's actually oh my wow she she was a very happy cat that cat was the happiest cat i'd ever seen i kind of so, want to stay at your place as a guest like I, <laughs> come on over <laughs> i got I, i'm sleeping I got on your couch and i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck, I gotta go Jack Taylor off. All right. <laughs> I mean, Until he starts Googling how to get off 50 year olds. All right, just have him back up onto a kid. <laughs> just slowly back. I did, that's the other thing. I didn't even have to place it in. The cat is spending, when your cat is in heat, it is trying to find a dick, like constantly. It is mm. running around the house, like, there must be something well, I can stick inside of me. Oh, 
That reminds me. Reminds me. I should have taped it to like or like something so the cat could have found it naturally. We've seen so. Much. Oh, we don't want to get there yet. Let's, yeah, let's, uh, Mega Man uh, Legends sequel. Let's back up. But yeah, that's uh, he supposedly had like an appointment to get the cat spayed and fixed and everything else. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people go on about Vito, like we did for an absurdly long time last stream about Vito, you know, potentially being a a, a molester of other small creatures um the ones that are birthed by humans um he he's potentially got an affinity for them because of cuties and a couple other things so it's neither one as a girl depending on your feelings about him um and just a few other uh other reasons i mean you could pick various ones there's so many out there uh but yeah and so a lot of people like i said go off on that about him i i find the cat thing again the most disturbing one like you could say and I'm not agreeing with you, but you could say that Vito is trying to uh, justify art and everything else when it comes to the Cuties movie. There is no fucking justifying what I just showed you, people. <laughs> you know, um, I, I get it. Uh, the cat and heat can annoy you uh, unless you're living in a cardboard box. Um, there is no reason why you necessarily have to keep the cat in the room with you. And there's these funny little things on hinges. They call doors. Um, most of them close. Uh, most. I mean, unless, like, you know, again, cardboard box. Yeah, I wouldn't want to close that. Or it might be too difficult, you know? We'll, we'll, we'll brush over that. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I, why couldn't you just lock the cat out of the room? That literally cost the same amount as the Q-tips. Actually, the Q-tips were slightly expen more expensive. You really want to break down the price per Q-tip per box. Which I'm not about to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but either way you expelled probably more effort at the very least in 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 masturbating your cat than you did uh with just putting the cat on the other side of a door um but yeah 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 he uh <laughs> i kind of almost should look for since we're on it the fucking the tommy c one was funnier that that version of the fucking cat story it's it's creepier because he actually like makes cat noises and everything else to emulate the cat getting off yeah yeah uh yeah beetle's fucking weird <laughs> at the very least but uh i played that because it, um well a it has nothing at all to do with Vito. Uh, I think it's funny because it's one of those, like, it is, it is indefensible. I mean, how do you put that shit out there in the world? Oh, fuck. Who knows? But we're going to start off actually, actually getting into the Eric July story now. We're going to start off, uh, so we've gone through, we, you've seen uh, the whole argument with Nick Ricada and Eric July, where he kind of asked him some flat out questions that have been kind of coming up um, on and off. Uh, in in particular from Dick Masterson and Vito. I showed you Dis Dick Masterson's, uh, his actual review of ISOM. And we went over that whole thing. I wanted to give it to, like, as fair as possible. Um, we've also seen uh, Dick Masterson confront Eric July initially. Um, so, and then we've kind of seen Vito's opinion on it too as well. So really kind of where we're at in the timeline and stuff is a new character is now going to join the, uh, the whatever fucking cinematic universe you want to call this. But, uh, this character is going to, going to become key a little bit later on. So, uh, let's start off with kind of what happens and what's going on here. And I feel like the stream does a pretty good job for very quickly and very efficiently and effectively getting the information out there. So we'll kind of watch this, and I'll give you some information here and there. We've seen so much go so far over comic books at the end of the day. We're all supposed to be here in a space where we can come together over what we love. Comics, books, science fiction, whatever the fandom is that you are interested in, we all should be able to celebrate that together. They had a great interview with former DC Comics head Dan DiDio yesterday, who was saying exactly that same thing. But... People take things too far on the internet. They get really angry. Uh, they go out there and they do vicious things towards people where it tends to be uh, something that goes way over the line. And this happens 
all the time. Uh, I've seen it happen towards me. I mean, gosh, Heather Antos called security on me at SDCC, San Diego Comic Con, just because I was there reporting on comic books. I didn't do anything. It was absolutely crazy. Now we're seeing this happening to Ripa. The haters have gone at Ripa for a long, long time. Of course, uh, because of this, someone... Uh, even made a false flag situation where they uh, alerted some Christian organization to ISOM, uh being a trademark to try to go at RIPA, even legally. And we covered that, I believe, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. If not, uh, basically, so there was there's fans building on both sides of this argument. You have Eritualized fans who are going to be very much against Dick Masterson, Vito, the biggest problem, and all that. Um, and so they're... I have not heard much in the way coming from Eric July's fans towards biggest problems other than your guys' argument is stupid, just get the hell on with life. And then there is uh, the Dick Masterson biggest problem in the universe, uh, the Dick show at this time, um, and then Vito's, Vito's opinions on this. It, it, uh, it's a lot more tangential. Or not tangible, 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 not tangential. Jesus Christ. Uh, it's more tangible as far as like you can actually point to acts of them going out and doing things like uh, what you're about to see with an individual and what he's talking about where they reached out to uh, the International School of Ministry, which is abbreviated ISOM, about uh, co a copyright or potential trademark infringement with isom the comic that we went over last time just mess with his business but now it's bleeding over into real life and this is something that nobody should have to deal with all right my name is john della rose i am a number one best-selling author and award-winning comic creator this is my subscribe star right here it's a patreon alternative i'm trying to create monthly comics and do so right on here the people here actually support our comics support our art support our cultural movement because we are trying to fight the cultural war through something new now patreon banned me of course somebody went and false flagged me back in the day and so i'm on here this is a great website that allows free speech and allows us to produce our content unmolested so please get on here support our cause support our books i really appreciate you guys and if there's more content that you want that you really would love as a subscriber definitely leave a message on here. Uh, we listen to our customers. We love you guys. You're the best people on the planet. Thanks so much. And guys, also, if you want my uh, regular books, uh, they're up on my web store. All these links are in the description below. So here we are. Uh, we have uh, this guy was running uh, a, I guess, uh, anti-Eric July sort of Twitter account a while back. That got um, uh, uh, taken down for some sort of DMCA thing. I don't know exactly what happened back at that point. Uh, but he's big mad to the point where he shows up at Ripa's warehouse right here. Now, according to Eric July. Okay, so the thing that's going on here is uh, Eric July's handle is, or his universe that he's built everything around. It's called the Ripa, Ripaverse, R-I-P-P-A, verse, okay? And so uh, this guy goes out. He's one of Dick Masterson. That's where these bunnies come from. It's a bunny army. It's one of dick's thing i have no fucking clue about it either um i know he mentions it um actually uh goes out there and kind of well you'll see what he does let's just put it that way um but this person is created the account clip of verse and he's just an anti an anti air july person i guess that's the best way i can explain it without giving anything away that's the problem this is not even the publicly listed place uh that's on the um uh... Uh, books that go out it's a private location at that so how did he get the information from this place it looks like it actually came from the dmca not the dmca the uh the trademark uh law complaint proper which is and that's because so eric july has actually trademarked the ripaverse so apparently when uh clipaverse was like kind of infringing upon it so he said um i don't know what the what the guidelines are for proving with like trademark um so might be different but he ends up getting rid of this guy's like channel and shit like that so yeah he kind of got mad and you'll see what he did is kind of private information also very weird happening here this shouldn't happen guys don't show up to people's like real life spaces like this i mean it's it's a difference to like talk to a guy at a convention or in public like that it is it is oh and i'm probably repeating information i wasn't pay totally paying attention i was trying to make sure everything was operating smoothly but if i am repeating information uh 
Anyway, so when Ripaverse ended up doing the trademark infringement and getting rid of or doing a DMCA, which is also the other thing that I've heard with this, um, against uh, Clipaverse, he ends up having to put in because you have to put in all your your legal information. I was kind of surprised that Eric July actually put this information in. Um, he could have had this filed on behalf of him by a lawyer, especially dealing with the kind of people that he's already dealt with so far from what we've seen. I think he would have been smarter having at least a attorney on, on file or on retainer or something like that um, to where he could just basically use the attorney's address for all this because he would have been able to do that. So, But he didn't. He ends up using his business address, and so this guy then goes and uh, shows up at his business address. I'll let you see what he does. It's very different to like go to someone's like private warehouse that's not listed anywhere, uh, paste some weird dollar bills on there, odd stuff. Uh, now you see the bunnies here. This comes from uh, Dick Masterson's uh, uh, web sort of thing, their streaming thing. And all of them put little bunnies in the chat there. I guess that's that's something to do with that. I don't really watch that show so much, uh, but I, I know that's where it comes from. So that's that's where that meme comes from, I guess. So he's trying to signal that I, he's one of Vito and Dick Masterson's people by doing this. I don't I don't think that helps Dick Masterson and Vito whatsoever. Really bad optic here, regardless. Ethan Van Skyver commented on this. Dude, stop menacing these people. They don't know you or understand your intentions or your boundaries. This is too far. And uh, the guy claims it's a joke, but... okay. So that is why I wanted this pointed out here and why I included this clip in particular is because right here we have Clipaverse who is being called out by Ethan Van Skyver or Ethan Van Skyver. Oh my God. I hate his fucking name. EVS. Um, telling him like, Hey, look, you're doing too much. Right? So I just, I, I think that's funny because you're going to see another story arc. Uh, at the same time, yeah, when you don't know somebody, it does get it does get scary if somebody shows up. I had people uh, threaten to uh, do harm to me uh, back in 2018 when I was banned from the World Science Fiction Convention. Uh, they said if I showed up in the city of San Jose, and this was a city of San Jose employee who did this, uh, that there there'd be you know fists thrown or whatever. I was like, holy crap, crazy. And I also received a weird package at my house. I've got little kids, so I was like, and it was exploding glitter. Uh, bomb type of thing. I had no idea what it was. Very scary when you've got little children uh, present for something like that. I didn't know who did it, whether it was a fan, whether it was a foe. Uh, not a good thing. And uh, I think it was one of the people from the uh, mainstream comic industry uh, to this day, but uh, nobody took credit for it. So this is the type of thing that gets very scary for a content creator. And of course, like I said, nobody should have to deal with this in real life. Uh, poor Ripa. I mean, gosh, he just has haters going at him from every angle, 24 hours a day. Uh, I'm glad I'm not that big in some ways. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oof, really rough stuff. Even Gail Simone decided to comment on this and uh, and say yikes about it. Gail Simone, of course, is one of the rabid leftists in the industry but she understands like there's a line that shouldn't be crossed and like when you've got left and right coming together on something like that you know that there's an issue and it's gone too far all right leave a comment down below with what you think about this hit that like and subscribe button we'll be back soon oh i thought he played the damn clip in this i was another freaking cut of it sorry i was having issues i feel like i'm having issues with my looks like it actually came chat. from the dm hold on let me do this we'll go here no not what i wanted to do get out of here uh okay so we're going to check out i want to make sure the stream uh chat i have it boop, boop, boop. Uh, there we go sorry about that okay so basically what riley does i thought we had it um so the guy that runs clip of Earth, his name is riley what riley did was he went to the business of eric july and started pasting dollars or some weird pseudo dollar. I don't know. I've heard both on the outside of the building. Uh, let's actually see. I know I do have another version of this. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, pop it right out. Give me two seconds to do this. Okay. 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 There we go. Holy crap. Calm down. So we are going to go to this stream. I had this in reserve, but I thought that other clip had the thing in it i must have forgotten that it did not so this is the biggest problem in the universe this is actually the episode where this stuff occurs i'm gonna scrub really quick because i know it is in here oh, let's eric july that eric 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 
they hate this guy so much they did a whole stream on him or you know it, this is okay it is not that sorry for all the dead air i'm trying to like do this and i know it's in here is it just this yes okay so here's the actual video the video that was sent which has been 264,000 views this is riley's viral moment him and his girlfriend have had an amazing success they're on a run month. it's only up from here uh okay here is here's riley going to the headquarters the warehouse of the ripaverse yeah okay so he's gone to the warehouse that was listed on the dmca claim and so he goes there and he does this little sabotage whatever destruction of property you can call it a couple different things um but it's it's all in jokes apparently yes which is in a just a like a nondescript uh industrial park industrial song. park everybody knows what those are like they all have the same driveways the same buildings it's a across giant the empty country. parking lot with nobody there because there's only like five guys working manufacturing vitamin repackaging vitamins and stuff like that yes. in there okay here's his here's riley's production all right, Eric, ignore those super chats, you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, Riley also was upset that he super chatted Eric and Eric didn't read them on air. Yeah. So uh, he's giving him live super chats <laughs> in retaliation for not reading. He's taping Eric, money to the door. The super chats, so I brought him 50 bucks. Also vandalized the building with these stickers. Let's see what he has to say about that. <laughs> 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 okay, so we all saw that and we went, well, yeah. all right. He put cool. some stickers on his uh, building and he taped some money to the door. 50 bucks. Now, we assumed, I don't know why I assumed this, but I assumed that any rational person would react to this and say, well, that was stupid. Might as well let this play. It also has the reaction from them as regarding the, uh, regarding what uh, Eric July had to say as well. Uh... Or not say anything at all. This this is actually important, and that's why I'm letting it play as much as I am. Um, so this all feeds into this now ongoing arc that we're gonna have between Eric July. He'll have it against Vito. He has his arc against uh, Dick Masterson. Then he'll also have another ongoing arc against Riley or Young Clippa, as you'll hear him referred to, or the Clippaverse. At all. Yeah. Just be like, yeah, I'm just, just gonna ignore, it. ignore this stupidity. If this guy thinks he got one over on me by giving me Whatever. fifty dollars with pictures of bunnies drawn on them, mm -hmm. sure, you're a winner. Congratulations. Instead, this spiraled into two days of psychopathic screaming about how Riley is a viable threat to this man's private business. This did actually happen. I will say in hindsight, what what happens here, Eric? I'm sure you already wish like it didn't happen. I understand the reason why you did it. Um, at least I think I understand the reason why you did it. Uh, but I, I don't think in hindsight, this wasn't the best look for you. Yeah. And this is doxing, stalking, it, harassment, uh -huh. trespassing, loitering, uh -huh. and every and criminal crime, vandalism and mischief. And how Riley will soon be sentenced to 20 years in federal prison. <laughs> or you're missing the. Uh, or. Also, I heard every single uh, synonym and euphemism for getting shot that black people have or have ever had. Ventilated, aerated, Swiss cheese. Mm. Uh, well, the reason, Dick, that th they're allowed to shoot Riley dead for sticking money to their door mm -hmm. is, of course, because Eric July's business is headquartered in Texas, a lawless state <laughs> yes. where you can shoot anyone for any reason. A murder-based uh, uh, mer murder meritocracy. Economy. Meritocracy. Yes. <laughs> Here's a couple tweets I've collected. Have gun will kill. Uh, one, uh, this was Spades86 who told Riley, why don't you... <laughs> Can't call him that. <laughs> That's what he calls himself. Aww. Why don't you act hard with that same energy during the day? Oh, wait, Texas Penal Code 9.41 permits the use of force to protect property. <laughs> Snarky Commander says, in Texas, if you walk onto my driveway, pick up my 45-year-old cassette tape of MS... 
F whatever, some old tape. Some kind of child porn that he has. Yeah, then turn and head away with it. I can legally shoot you dead, and I've committed no crime. Uh, No, false. (laughs) (laughs) You've come onto my property, took my property, and attempted to flee. It's literally the Simpsons episode. Uh, Homer, it doesn't work if you invite him in. Get away, Flander. Here's E. Wee's saying... Officers, there's a man on my... Here's what, you know, Eric would say to the cops. Officers, there's a man on my property vandalizing my business while knowingly trespassing. Remember, fam, we're talking about Texas, where the castle doctrine is a thing. So now the castle doctrine, of course. Well, we all... I mean, you you could shoot someone for coming in your house in California, too. Yeah. It's not like... Coming into your house, not... You have to be afraid of your life, Knocking on the door and sticking money to it. You can't shoot a fucking Jehovah's Witness... For showing up and <laughs> oh, leaving some literature. Texas? No, I don't what think do you mean? so. Oh, because they worship Christ as well. Here, Julian Thank Leonard you. Reyes, who seems to be some sort of a lawyer himself. Legal scholar. Yeah, says he broke several breaking and entering laws, which are harshly punished in Texas. Blob the retard here is looking at a two to ten year prison sentence. Minimum. Now, I would say, okay, I don't know Texas state law. I can kind of maybe see, like, the the castle doctrine relates to you all of your domain basically so it then becomes like okay where does his domain end is it just because he's leasing the property uh that his domain is only within inside the building versus the exterior of the building because the building itself is owned by another entity uh, i mean there could be a bunch of weird stuff with this especially with like the business park aspect of it because typically that of a main building He'll only have a portion of it. So, like, I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll give them that. But doesn't mean quirky fucking bullshit laws don't exist and that he couldn't get fucking prosecuted or that he wouldn't be within his rights to act on that shit. So, like, it could go either way. I'll, I'll give them that. Play. Oh. Minimum. <laughs> Put him away for life, I think. These based, are the, uh, based on the this ANCAP video. libertarians, yes, right? Yes, yes, ANCAP libertarians. A guy tapes <laughs> $50 to your <laughs> glass door and says, uh, and flips off your security camera outside, right. by the way. Right. In the public. Never enters. Goes at night the when there's mall. literally no one there for him to harass. When have, when have fucking, when have libertarians ever been associated with anti-capitalism that's what they mean with the ANCAP I've only ever heard that referred to in the context of anti-capitalism and I know that most libertarians of all forms rely on the fucking uh free market is their big thing that that's what they fucking want so like the anti-capitalist no no I I mean limited government I don't fucking it's know. him. By he himself. went earlier and knocked on the door and nobody, nobody answered. answered. Well, Co- probably because they didn't have any comics to ship today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably they got the day off because it's like, what are you going to do? Ship two comics? <gasps> Finally weighing in is Eric July himself, Dick. Oh, man. And he's got a little something to tell you about Texas. Eric July says, legal advice, don't do anything that threatens or violates the private property rights of is responsible he a lawyer? Is he like gun a, owners. A bird law lawyer or something? I think he's a bird Retard law lawyer. Law? Yeah, okay. Eric July clearly Sorry, is versed in the law. Uh, do not violate the private property rights of responsible gun owners in their home. I will say something that uh, at least I feel like rings true, Okay. And I'll, I'll explain this in the context of Eric July and why I'm saying this, okay? Most of the street savvy people that I know were probably some of the best versed in law of any community. Um, any person who's going to be openly exposed to uh, breaking the law typically is very well aware of the law. So they know exactly when and where they're breaking it and how they're breaking it and what they're not in violation of. Why do I say that? Okay, well, some in some of my research on Eric July, it kind of came up that, like, he himself has admitted, like, he had a bit, he had, like, a a street a street phase. Like, he, he did stuff. He, he hustled. Um, take that as you will and as you w- may or may not be. And from what I understand, he's had interactions with the law and um, probably would be pretty wise because of that. So a lot more so probably than Vito and maybe Dick Masterson. Uh, 
the only reason I would maybe say that they have some familiarity is these two got on national news and it wasn't involving uh, children. It was involving uh, the trans movement. And basically, uh, there was a thing, I don't know if many people recall or care or remember, but there was a situation a while back when Dave Chappelle did a special on Netflix. And it kind of became a uh, trans LGBT type issue, okay? And so there was a lot of people protesting and protesting Netflix for even airing this and all that stuff. Um, that's a whole issue aside. These two got involved because these protests were ag against a comic and they both see themselves as comics. Um, so they went out there and they started an anti-protest pro comics, uh, against the, uh, LGBT, uh, people that were there and they were attacked subsequently. So it became an interesting video. It was one of those, they did it for the attention in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, they might have some familiarity, but I doubt they're either one of them is very, 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 uh, legally knowledgeable or business park, <laughs> regardless of how you feel about it. They're protected, especially in Texas. What is this belief that Texas is like this magic fantasy state where you get to shoot loiterers, Ted, for um, fucking around in your parking lot? That's not a thing. Do you remember a guy who said steers and queers come from Texas? <laughs> I do remember I that I think guy. we've discovered the etymology that of Sergeant that. Sergeant Lee Ermey, I think was his name. These guys are such uh, low testosterone drama queens that they cannot resist turning everything into some kind of bizarre murder scenario. Dude, they're babies. It's fucking so <laughs> weird. As we keep bringing up, Eric July works for The Blaze. Who does yeah. The Blaze employ? Alex Stein. What does Alex Stein do pretty much every week? For Goes money. to a private business, <laughs> storms in the door, starts making crazy noises and filming himself doing whatever the fuck. Which Riley did not do. Which Riley he didn't even go into the, the door. business. What Alex Stein does, if you think that violate going into a business is breaking and entering, then you should hate Alex Stein. Abs you should absolutely despise you him. You should think that he's, like, committing every crime and deserves to be shot a million times. But obviously they don't believe that. We love Alex Stein. It's hilarious. All right, this is just, like, stupid man on the street pranks that... I don't like this whole, like, okay, you work for a company. That company also employs... It's the same shit, like, we were talking about when we were going to fucking sit there and get at, um, uh... At Lyle Convoy, where basically I've linked him to the IDF and fucking Palestine through one common connection. Like, okay, you could probably draw that that couple degrees of separation between you and anything. You know, like, if I wanted to be that disingenuous, you can't say, oh, well, because he works for them, he obviously supports work. Trust me, I've worked in a lot of fucking jobs. I hate the fucking people that I'm working with. My last job in point. Like, <laughs> I actively knew there was someone out to fucking get me. So, like, you don't have to fucking like the people that you work for or get along with them or even have any of the same ideals. I know it's a shocker. Everyone has been doing Tom Green used to do this. You go to a sushi restaurant and you put a dildo on the fucking revolving sushi thing. It's hilarious. You go, oh, that's funny. All right, I get it. I get the bit. You know, you don't go, oh, my God, what if this turns into a mass shooting? People were saying that this is a. OK, but the problem is, is you're also taking a lot of things, Vito, way out of the context of the time that frame that a lot of that stuff happened in, like Tom Green stuff and that over the top stuff died out pretty quickly because there was a lot of legal implications from it. That's why a lot of prank style YouTube shit is now even like not even kept around by YouTube. Like they disagree with it as a policy. So like, depending on the platform, the platform also has its own policies, but I know you're getting at the whole fact of what he said about being able to shoot somebody, but I'm just saying like, there's a lot has changed that was acceptable is now not acceptable. People are a lot touchier about things to where their property and stuff like that. Why? Cause inflation has been so fucking bad. So something that was maybe not a as much of an impact in or, in the earning uh, portfolio of a person, like, oh yeah, okay, well, what do you want me to do? I'll pay you fifty bucks. To now is 
astounding. Now we're talking about McDonald's meals are 50 bucks. So imagine inconveniencing a restaurant could cost you too. Like times have changed. This is basically all I'm fucking saying here. Times have changed. So like you can't say that because they did this before, it's okay now. I mean, there's a lot of things. There's people that like lighting things on fire in people's yards that were done before and was okay. Do you think it's not a crime now, Vito? Like, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? <laughs> it's... Never mind. Slippery slope towards a mass shooting scenario. I should Eric have July clipped that said tweet. that Dimebag, uh, Daryl... And look, and I'm going to be the asshole here, and the only reason we're talking about mass is because did you see the size of fucking Riley in that goddamn video? Do I need to go back? Oh, was killed for less than this. Dimebag Daryl was killed for and less than... She was than... shot on stage by a crazy fan, right? <laughs> and he said he was... he was, he, What it is is he was killed for le less than this, what it is. It's like, well, that's... I suppose that's true. I don't <laughs> understand... If you're like a tough guy, right? Like that's your Texas is not Africa. <laughs> <laughs> it's still the US. Yeah. US laws do not let you just go around fucking shooting people right. until you're out of bullets. You can't yell castle doctrine and just shoot a guy dead for being in your parking lot. Get that flyer off of my car. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Here's what Why I Why do they uh, want it to work like that? I don't know. Okay, here's what I don't understand. Yeah. Is that Eric July is a tough guy, right? <laughs> that's the that's the image you're putting out. You're kind of like a the gangster of uh, making comic books, you know? Oh, yeah. Tough guy, you get the hat, you, you ah, see? <laughs> yeah. You got a plot, see? I got a plot for you. It's thirty five dollars, see? <laughs> Me making money, that's the plot, see? So I didn't have money, now I do have money, see? Cool. Fuck badass those charity kids, guy. see? <laughs> Why do you go, I'm gonna shoot that fat guy? If he gives me money that was again. like a video. You're like, well, that doesn't make it. He doxed my private business address. And it's like, you gave it to him. <laughs> well, you do. You I would like complain. To see, I want to see proof of that. I want if, to see proof of that. I don't want to see a screenshot. I want to see proof. What do you want? Like a like the email? No. I yeah, but we got to really bla just gloss over the whole fact of like, okay, yeah. It, it might not be doxing technically. Um, I think it is. I think you're taking private information and making it public. I mean... But like, let's let's even put that aside. Like you're saying that he didn't do it for malicious reasons. I mean, he literally went there for a malicious reason. Like, so who knows? Like his whole thing is about trolling him. So like, you could say there's some ill intent there, and maybe judging the audience and stuff like that, it could be an actual threat. Like, I don't know. You could spin it a bunch of ways. It, I would have to see it. Uh, like in full, full context, like, no, the audiences that we're talking about and shit. I don't want an email or a screenshot. I need proof. What it is, <laughs> is, well, our headquarters is at a different, like, somebody sent me, now everybody's sending me all this dirt on them. I know. And I'm People are sending me, like, legit dirt, where they're like, hey, you could actually get him in trouble with the government. I'm like, I don't want to do I that. I will. I'm running Please with everything. <laughs> Because he's making, th you can't threaten to kill Riley. I'm not, well, I'm not allowing that. Yeah, I don't know why they're doing that. I'm going to fucking, I'm coming back at you hard, man. Um, that he registered, he illegally registered his business to a P.O. box or something. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's, that's why Eric is. I don't know. He fucking illegally registered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making no legal claims about Eric he called Nick. He called Nick the N-word today. Well. And white bread. That's a white Hate How do you speech. call somebody then? Yeah, I would I would agree. The whole trespassing and stalking is definitely, yeah, possible, possible. How can they say anything they have done wasn't malicious? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I guess you could just say that I was just making this information public. I didn't I tell I told my audience not to go after them and everything else. That's where, like, I, I would have to see the full context of, like, him posting this information. Uh, it's it, I would definitely lean towards probably gonna be more malicious than not more than white bread Those are two polar uh, polar Cause he's opposed. retarded Because <laughs> Eric July is a retard Well, this did I guess that's kind of the, the 83 IQ. The he has an 83 IQ. He can't It's not that smart. He couldn't even bust tables at the Waffle House. I bet he wouldn't test They'd say go. What is their gauge for this shit? Because they don't like his language and how he speaks or what. Like, I, I would love to know their logic behind their fucking argument for this. Because let's look at what we're gauging here. Okay, so 
Dick Masterson, who, all right, fine. You've got a, a very nice hold of the English vocabulary. I'll give you that. But Vito, are we saying that you guys are above average intelligence? Uh, I'm not saying that 83 is average intelligence. They're obviously implying that he's well below. So there are you two technically of average intelligence? Like, is that what we're saying here? I, I would put Vito at slightly below to definitely below. Dick, I don't like you, but you seem intelligent. You do stupid fucking shit nonetheless. And smart people can be stupid. But I would say you're you're a good representative, unfortunately, of of average intelligence. Oh, go fly at the police station, buddy. You're out of here. Go ahead. What do you? Well, I, I'd say this. Like forks and spoons. I can't keep these apart. Eric Shulai has done very <laughs> well. Know? He's done very well with this, you know, overbearing. Like if I just talk tough, everybody uh, yeah. will fall in line because they don't want to challenge me, right? Yeah. And then Nick Ricade is like, "Oh, I don't give, give a shit about this like little thing you put on. You're an <laughs> idiot," and like basically humiliated him for two hours. It was uh, the entire time during the Nick Ricade Eric July. How dare you not disassociate with Dick Masterson stream, I guess was the theme. Was like I don't know. How are you is. friends with Dick Masterson? Why are you defending him or whatever? And it's like, well, all I and all Nick said was he went on Twitter and he's like, I'm seeing a lot of people saying it was legal to kill Riley. <laughs> For uh, taping money to Eric July's warehouse. First of all, as a lawyer, I'd like to say, do not definitely do that. don't do that. And no, you that's You'll not die. You'll yeah. go to prison. I think he said like, forever. yeah, yeah. I would agree with you, Jim. I was just kind of reading through that. You could say that uh, you can't threaten to kill Riley, but Riley is allowed to cross line after line after line. Definitely agree. And uh, Kia, okay, I believe you're on par with that like yeah I'm, I'm not sure anybody in this whole conversation is very intelligent at all ever don't do that and no it being texas does not somehow make it different <laughs> <laughs> and uh, eric july took issue with that he's like what do you mean i can't kill him i should be able to kill him like no you just this I is ridiculous to have rock star lawyers so what it is <laughs> is you think that you you think you look at me and you think wow that guy doesn't have lawyers or any sort of intelligence at all but actually i have amazing lawyers did and his he, did he actually say somebody was saying he said his lawyer said he would have been in his rights to shoot Ryan. Yeah, I brought in I brought in clips for my problem. How the how? how? All right, so that gives a pretty good a pretty good uh, synopsis of what's going on with the the Riley situation. Okay, so now we got a better understanding. We're gonna take that. And we're gonna put that aside for a little bit. We're coming back to it. Trust me, it gets better. But I need to introduce you to another another major person. Who you've already seen in this story, and it is uh, it's Ethan Van Siever. Uh, we've Skyver. God, I keep fucking up EVS. We keep uh, we've we've encountered him before with the whole uh Nick Ricada stuff, and then you also seen him involved with uh, involved with some of this stuff early on, where he was actually in defense of uh, in defense of in defense of Eric uh that has that will change let's put it that way that is going to change and you will see ebs go from team eric july to team uh dick and Vito, and that's going to be kind of important in all of this stuff too uh but we're gonna we're gonna listen to this stream for a little bit here this is probably the longest stream i've got planned so we're gonna listen to a good majority of this because it's gonna give us a lot of the good info uh make sure that we kind of know where Ethan's arc with all this starts and uh, how he's gotten involved with this. Uh, and it's somewhere where you don't, you don't think. Kind of see. I'm or somewhere you might not think. Let's put it that way. I'm also not going to have the time to cover everything. I'm going to try to keep this a little quick consolidated. Um, so if I miss something, put it in the comments. If it's worth it, I'll pin it. Uh, make, uh, or where. I thought I skipped enough of this. Uh oh, retard. All right. Um, all right, so to talk about how this started, you have to <laughs> really look. So what he's going to do is give the actual Ethan Van Skyver and Eric July arc all in one video. I found this. It was actually pretty insightful. And he starts from a position that is so far beyond Eric July and all this stuff. But it it comes into play. Look uh, at the situation that happened with EBS and Friday Night Tights. Those... Gary, 
uh, as from her baby Chris, especially. Um, the drama really started there um, with Zack Snyder and his appearance on Geek and Gamers. Okay. That is our tie-in with our music. So the music that I actually played in the beginning of the stream, uh, we had our copy of Hallelujah that was done by uh, Puddle's Pity Party. Hallelujah was used in the Watchmen soundtrack, a movie that was done by Zack Snyder. And then I had my favorite song, The Down with the Sickness by uh, Richard Cheese. Uh, his version in particular was the actual song used in uh, Dawn of the Dead back in 2004, Zack Snyder's first film uh, and a personal favorite of mine. I, I love that movie. Uh, but anyway, Zack Snyder's have been intimately tied with like this comics universe and stuff like that, um, especially with some of the movies that he's made. And so he was brought on to this uh, Geeks and Gamers uh, podcast, and that's where this is going to start. It could there have been a rift between EVS and the guys starting up and everything behind the scenes, or even videos here or there? Maybe. I don't have it. Um, I don't, I'm not going to be able to dig that up, but that's besides the point. The clear divides happened during the Zack Snyder uh, appearing on the Geeks and Gamers podcast um, live stream. and. Yes, that rippled all the way to Aaron July and his uh, other conflict. So, all right. So oh, you yeah. you could theoretically blame in this scenario that he's about to establish Zack Snyder <laughs> for the Eric July drama, at least on Ethan Van Skyver's side. <laughs> I'll show the original Zack Snyder clip that kind of set us off. Okay. Oh, just a quick thing before we get started. I know that um, the on our on our um, donation page, we still have the Geeks and Gamers logo. I just want to say that I really um, we talked about this, and you know we're really not affiliated with Geeks and Gamers as far as I'm concerned. And I really just want to make that clear. And I also want to just say, um, you know, in, in light of recent events, I think we really, you know, if Justice League teaches us anything, it's about coming together. And we, there's no room for hate. And uh, I just think that it's important. It's an important message. And of course. It's, you know, as um, the father of uh, Asian children, it, it really hits close to home for me. And I just, you know, I just really want to put that out there that we all, you know, there's no room for hate. And, and that's just what it's about. Okay. All right. um, yeah. So right there, that was a big mishap. Uh, the Geeks and Gamer guys, they've talked about this. And on Friday Night Tight, they've talked about this plenty of times about how this kind of all divulged and went wrong. Uh, Zack Snyder really f screwed him over right there <laughs> big time. Uh, it seems to be like a, kind of a misunderstanding, though. It appears it has the appearance of calling them racist, and I do agree that it does have the appearance of that, and perception is reality. Either way, when the so basically Zack Snyder making this comment on this podcast, saying that he's not tied to geeks and gamers, and it makes geeks and gamers potentially look racist, right? Well, you'll see who's involved with geeks and gamers and all that in just a second here, but I'm just gonna keep laying out the bits of this. Um, one, because I feel like his audio is a little tough to understand. And two, uh, just because I'm going to keep repeating it so that you get the whole line by the end of it. You don't got to like keep remembering what's going on and where the fuck we are in this. this live stream was because it gets a bit convoluted. Really I will say that. Um, and he went on a tangent to talk about how pissed he was and uh, that this was happening and that they let this happen. And in my opinion, it's like, yeah, I'd say 2020, this was not a good move having Zack Snyder on, but I also don't see the problem with giving him a chance to, it's kind of stupid to not at least seek that out, right? That opportunity. I completely uh, screwed him over, but, um, and EBS was right to rant about it, how, like, bad of a move this was, and they probably should have spoken up, and he's right. They should have spoken up and been like, hey, you want to clarify that? Or, hey, we're not, <laughs> I hope you're not calling us racist. Either way, um, and I would show Ethan's rant, but I, I think it's deleted. Either way, I, I'm having trouble. So there's a missing context here. So you have, Zack Snyder makes his remarks on this podcast, Friday Night Tights, about Geeks and Gamers. Geeks and Gamers has EVS on it. And so him basically saying these remarks here alludes to Geeks and Gamers being racist, which therefore, in a, in a way, is alluding towards EVS being racist. You'll see how this ties in. Finding it. Um, but he called FNT and the whole lot of them a bunch of zeros. Um, FNT kind is Friday night speaking generally, but at the same time, that's a uh, it was a pretty spiteful when he said that, and uh, yeah, that's kind of the start of the rift right there because it was uh, unnecessary dig. It's it, it kind of seemed like he 
was being a lot of opportunities there. But it saw like a chink in the armor essentially right there with PNC gamers and like hopped on to kind of like attack them at their at their weak point, right? Where when they're at their weakest. And there's kind of like an annoying thing also I'll mention where uh, it, it just it just seems that EVS generally doesn't like the Friday Night Tight guys because uh, what I get is that they're not creators and they're he's not alone on this. There's a lot of people that are artists, creators, or whatever, and they really think that you need to be the one practice. You need to practice the art in order to criticize the art, and if you don't do such, that uh, that you don't practice the art and you're criticizing it, you're you're bullshit and you're just kind of hurting yourself or something like that. Okay, so. Zack Snyder makes the remarks. The remarks are about geeks and gamers. EVS is on geeks and gamers. Geeks and gamers already doesn't like Friday Night Tights. Why? Because geeks and gamers is artists and professionals. Friday Night Tights, guys like me. They're just out here openly criticizing stories, art, whatever. Right? Yeah. Um, I think that's where his mentality is, and I think that's where he kind of built up some animosity between. That's, uh, that's just speculation. All right, so let's go into my next video. Let's see, this one, we're going to get a little bit of ES aside on this. Most of us would fall over our faces in order to just get a little attention from those people. Like uh, if, um, uh, <laughs> what's his name, Ryan Johnson said, I'll come on for an interview uh, with you guys. Uh, then how many of us would be like, uh, yeah, like definitely, I'd love to talk to Ryan Johnson. And by the way, once you got him on the air, would you be licking his balls? Uh, and I would guess, judging from what I learned over the past couple of years, uh, that about 99% of these guys uh, would be licking his balls. And that's what I learned. Uh, and a lot of it is just a great... Right, right there, I kind of think that's bullshit. Um, Zack Snyder never, hasn't really created any, like, sin against... Uh, he hasn't really ruined, at this point at least, he hasn't... Well, I don't think he's either done it, done it yet either, but the, uh, he hasn't, like, ruined an IP, an existing IP yet. He had uh, adapted Watchmen, and that was a generally really liked adaptation. Same with 300. Um, not so much, not too many people liked his Superman one, but he didn't do anything, like, overtly insulting to the character. So, uh, not, not to, like, Ryan Johnson. Um, but even so, it's, it's just, you still want to, like, open communications um, with, with, him, with him, at least. And, you know, if, if you were to talk to Ryan Johnson and do what he said, yeah, then that's completely different story. But, um, yeah, I, it just putting Zack Snyder and Ryan Johnson in the same category is, is just a false equivalence, I think. And I think this is very uh, ironic, too, with more current events. Uh, with the whole beef with uh, uh what was it the the, the Robin Hood guy <laughs> and uh, how you know we'll have a discussion why why not the, again you can't know that what happened was going to happen all right let me drift to uh, get super chats and I really don't like it I, I mean what I say you know I'm here for a purpose uh, the super chats are great I appreciate them but I'm fuck these people I, I mean it I mean when I say that I'm not supporting them I, uh, but I mean maybe that's just I'm a creative person too so I've always seen other creative people as competition rather than I don't really have a lot of respect for uh, for my uh, contemporaries even in the movie industry yeah i just kind of want to show those words it doesn't feel like he does have respect for those people and kind of shows also very ironic with the super chat comment if you've seen anything with uh evs of lately i think it's, it's just been on like two weeks straight of like three to four hour live streams uh again biggest criticism is that he's uh not getting his books out on time and uh he's just live streaming more than really anybody else i know um getting a lot of super chats so look his comic looks awesome. I have not read it. Uh... Okay. So what he does there, uh, this uh, Bats guy, uh, he, I was trying to look at his name. I, I can't see it well enough to tell you. But anyway, this guy, what he does here is he's saying that, you know, Ethan's sitting there and he's saying that he, as an artist, doesn't respect and doesn't appreciate people that are non-artists. Non-artists including... Friday Night Tights, and including Zack Snyder, because even he, he says, even my contemporaries in film. So he doesn't respect him. And he then goes on to point out that, you know, he sits there and he says this stuff all while sitting there, and he's not been putting out his art himself. He's making more money off of live streaming. And so he's live streaming more now and not putting out his comics and his art on time. So... Kind of, who is he to fucking sit here and criticize, you know, people that he sees as lesser when he's not even fucking following through on stuff himself? Throne charity. It doesn't have to be associated with some Hollywood fucking act. So, uh, anyway, uh, they were all going to do a, hey, we're going to get him on our show. Now, Zack Snyder thought that he was going to be on there with Uche and some other people. He didn't know the... Yeah, I mentioned the whole charity bit, and that kind of, with the Geeks and Gamer incident, uh, made it difficult to kind of put Zack on the spot, too, because there's a lot of money involved. Um, 
Oh, so they had him on for a charity thing? Is that what he's alluding to? Again, I forget. I, 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 I know it doesn't really uh, matter. Raising char- using uh, Zack Snyder to, uh, when he appears on the show, as an opportunity to raise money. I don't see a problem with that. Uh, I think it's just kind of bullshit criticism from EBS. Okay. This video, Let's see. And uh, somehow uh, a football player that was a part of Geeks and Gamers was invited to be a part of the charity. And because he was associated with Geeks and Gamers, Geeks and Gamers kind of shoehorned their way into the charity. Is that- so and this is his side of the story, um, which he does not have the details of the Geeks and Gamers side of the story. Uh, because that seems like insider information. Um, essentially. Oh, okay. So he's not even, he's not even a part of Geeks and Gamers. The way he made it allude to is that he was a part of Geeks and Gamers to begin with. Okay, wait a minute. So we have Zack Snyder makes comments on Friday Night Tights that insults Geeks and Gamers. EVS, who is not even a part of Geeks and Gamers, doesn't like Friday Night Tights because they're not artists and they're um, they're openly criticizing art, right? And then he also doesn't like Zack Snyder because he doesn't like the movie contemporaries, as he's put it, right? So, meanwhile, he's out here and he's following through on his commitments in favor of more money is out here saying all this shit about them while not even being a part of this fucking show. So he's uh, alluding. He's sticking his nose somewhere that it doesn't fucking belong. There seems to be a common thread with this guy. He's making speculation. Uh, and I, I, think I, I think he does this a lot when he talks. Uh, he kind of says false stuff that sound pretty true, but there's, they're just a little off. And it kind of paints these pictures, uh, other people in bad pictures. In bad pictures. Yeah, all right, let's get to later in the video. To this, too. I think you guys could have done your own charity. You didn't need to do it as a, a piggyback onto uh, a place where you weren't wanted by somebody who didn't like you. Uh, and you didn't know that. Like, the fans didn't know that. So Zack Snyder shows up, and he was shocked to see that he was in the company of Geeks and Gamers. And, uh, you know, uh, he just uh, took an opportunity to say, I told you guys I didn't want you here. Uh, and essentially... Uh, call- uh, he, I mean, he knew Geeks and Gamers were there. He just didn't want their label to be anywhere associated with it because that's probably what Zack Snyder was told that he didn't have any association with them, which is why he made that awkward comment about saying he's not associated with Geeks Gamers, which obviously he's not. Um, all right, but... Called Geeks and Gamers and the, uh, a hate group. And I just blew up at him. I just absolutely blew up. I went on my own stream and just blew up. The fuck? I totally understand being really upset over over like, people you're associated with just taking that. I, I get that. I uh, just don't, should not have gone about it the way he did. And they just stood there and took it. Like, it was just, they just wanted to be around Zack Snyder. Uh, it made me really, really angry that, you know, it's like, at that point, you had an opportunity to say to Zack Snyder, even though you admire him, he's calling out your audience. So he's mad at them for not going back at Zack Snyder for making these comments. And Zack Snyder was there as part of a charity event. Why the fuck? I, I, look, you can make another statement as an aside later on. But I mean, if it's somebody that's there and they're already there, they're live, they're doing their thing as part of a charity event. Now, if they, what if they say something? They're like, hey, you know, we didn't appreciate you saying that about Geeks and Gamers. They're, they're okay, guys. Whatever the fuck you want them to say, right? He says this shit. You say this shit in front of Zach. And Zach's like, well, I got to go then. And leaves. Now you've caused them who knows how much from the charity event because I'm sure they were getting money donated for Super Chats to ask Zack Snyder about different things. It's probably how that worked. Um, Either way, they're benefiting for the charity directly off the guy fucking being there. You know what I mean? It's like, this is not a moment that you let slip by. This is a moment where you say, listen, you're somebody who was just canceled by Hollywood. Uh, We're people who also feel... Yeah, I I think he's right. I think that's probably what they should have said. And... uh... It's not what happened, but uh, there's a lot of pressure on them. So I, I'm like, it's understandable, um, but it is what it is. It sucks that that happened, but um, like for myself. And by the way, I wish I could put it faster, but he bumps up the speed on his video. So I don't want it to be like, un- we're unable to listen to it. Uh, so I, I only put him at 1.25 because in instances like this, where he's playing it at 1.5, it's only at 1.75. It, it's technically, you, you can listen along and still get the gist of what's being said without losing anything. I would have been more, I wouldn't have gone and attacked the Geeks and Gamers uh, for that whole situation. All right, I have a little bit more to show from this one clip. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they could have said a bunch of different things. They could have said, hey, look, we didn't appreciate that remark or whatever. But it, depending on what the hell happened to where he wanted to distance himself that hard, who knows? Like, Okay, Geeks and Gamers could have been associated with making just maybe an off-putting joke. And it's like, well, okay, maybe you didn't necessarily have to come out and say that. But, you know, what happens if they're like, 
they had a stream just shitting on fucking Asian people for causing uh, COVID. That, I mean, that's what it sounds like we're talking about at this point in time. So I'm, I'm sure that's what people are insinuating and why he specifically took that opportunity to distance himself. And like the remarks that Zach gave were very specific. That they feel like you understand them and you come in here and you piss all over them and you call them a hate group and you tell them that you don't want their money and they're not included and they're not a part of this. I question why I highlighted some of them. <laughs> All right, uh, this is a good screenshot to kind of show exactly uh, what he said in somebody else's quote, but it's something. Uh, sorry, I can't get the original clip. Okay, we're going to skip ahead because this doesn't really have a whole lot to do with. It's kind of reiterating some of this scenario and being a little more pedantic about it, in my opinion. So we are going to go. I want to make sure I don't miss. Yeah, because this gameplay is actually important. So I'll uh, up, up. Okay. Didn't want to create. He knew that having this drama between uh, Ethan and FNT was not good for the culture, but Az was not happy about this because Az was included in this whole thing. He was a part of the I've got to open my um, door. So, of course, he's not happy. I've got to open my door. Give me two seconds. I really wish there was better ventilation in this room because, holy crap, my computer, when it gets going, it is hot as shit in here. Okay. Let's keep going. Happy. So, let's play the first clip. For them. I'm sure EVS can cope on his own, you know. I think the last time EVS spoke about me, I mean, he, um, he, uh, he didn't say so, uh, particularly flattering things. That I was a uh, Gary made my channel for me. That, um, I never said that. that. I was, uh, that the only two people are relevant on Friday Night Lights are Gary and, uh, and Jeremy. No, so, uh, Gary's um, the only one. Jeremy's not relevant. Maybe, maybe I'll, uh, just let him do his own. Yeah, so EVS is basically saying, it's like, oh, I, I was speaking generally, I only meant, like, Jeremy or one or two of the people, but. Uh, I don't know. Uh, in the live stream that he did, he, he never specified otherwise. Um, maybe it was a mistake, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That that's a uh, it's pretty harsh. And being as uh, being offended on behalf of your friends as well, kind of like you talk shit about me one thing, but talk shit about my friends. That's kind of where I draw the line. That's kind of how I feel as it's going about this. Own stuff. I've issued like five apologies in the course of this stream. <laughs> I'll do it again. I am sorry. I should have said. Bunch of zeros orbiting. Hold on a second. Bunch of zeros orbiting Gary and and uh uh heel versus babyface, and then there's also Eric July who shows up there, and he's like a stabilizing force, you know, young Ripa. Yeah, it's kind of funny. This is back when uh, Eric and Hammer buddy buddy. Um, so yeah. Uh, the, what was I gonna say? Shit. Um, either way, it's kind of whichever way he phrases that, how he's gonna call people zeros. Um. It's it's just unnecessarily malicious, and even if it's just directed at geeks and gamers, it's like I kind of I I'd be on ass right here as, as a side being like, well, fuck you, dude. Um, that was a cheap shot. You basically kicked the guy while he's down. Come on. But he's not a zero. He's like a if it's a zero to a hundred, he's like a one hundred. You know. Yeah. I should have insulted Jeremy. I didn't mean to insult as. I really didn't. <laughs> God damn it. And also, I kind of feel uh, should mention. There's speculation that the reason that he didn't want to insult Az is because Az does a toy channel, a uh, toy review channel, and that could have been bringing in more money for his cyber frog uh, toys, and he kind of uh, was thinking twice about including Az in that insult. But that is speculation. <laughs> You're making it a lot worse, right? Oh, yes. I forgot to talk about that. So Ethan Van Cyber, uh, EBS, has a comic of his own. So uh, he has this... Uh, robo frog or cyber frog i can't remember the name of it exactly but he has a comic of his own that he also has uh produced um he's actually produced i believe several issues so he's ahead of the game as far as like uh eric july is but still uh still they're both far more ahead of the game than Vito. uh we will get into that but Vito is also a member in all of this producing a comic now supposedly <laughs> if only he insulted Jeremy a minute ago. So, uh, Why can't I fix this? Why am I digging this hole deeper? The There's a video up on my channel about it, dude. There's a video up on my channel about it. I put my appeal in. My appeal was denied. See, I don't have to use Instagram. I have two Instagram accounts. I'm not using either of them. <laughs> so I can't possibly reach out to Az and apologize to him. I like the video. So yeah, he, he's making that claim that, yeah, oh, I tried it. So this feeds further into what we've already kind of stated. So, um, boom. Okay, I think this, what the hell was that? Boom. Okay. So, uh, kind of do like a, I don't know the proper words. Let's get into the like, next clip. Sit in front of somebody and kind of like feel like you're being a uh, council judge. No, it's just one person, but I don't know. You should have done it, though, in my opinion. Fix it, but I can't. All right, let's go. I do believe that I can out 
That's all. That's all you said. Old man must die. Did you go? Stuck to it. So don't you know? You want to go up the thing? What was that? I don't know the next guy, but you know, I'm sure he's doing some shit by himself. He's a big boy with a big connection. God damn. Okay, sing all types of shots to you. Yeah, slow down. They're talking fast. Yeah, this is a clip kind of explaining, just showing that where Az's state of mind is currently during this time. Fat. What an asshole. But what was that about me? You can you can get all mad about that. I am mad about it. On your behalf. That's just what was said about me. And I. You didn't speak of him either. No, no, I spoke around him, but not of him. Yeah. That's that's yeah. So now one of the guys is upset with EVS. So you got Zack Snyder makes the remarks about Geeks and Gamers on FNT. Geeks and Gamers, uh, Ethan comes and defends Geeks and Gamers uh, against Friday Night Tights and against uh, Zack Snyder. Uh, <laughs> Ethan is also now being accused of being exactly like Friday Night Tights and Zack Snyder. Uh so now Geeks and Gamers is mad at EBS because he didn't have to defend them saying, why did you talk about us? You didn't have to talk about us. Uh, just fucking get your nose out of here. And so now EBS is retaliating further against that. Basically, basically saying, well, I didn't talk about him specifically. I talked around him. So, okay. I knew there was another stream this i want to get us the context twitter trash is saying i talked all over his tweet and could you please read it again because he's never i mean you can believe him or not I, I honestly don't i don't know maybe it is beside the point all right all right this is a clip i recently dug up all right this is gonna be a long clip uh this really covers exactly where how gary feels about this and also covers more about kind of like solidifying where as stands uh on this whole point uh, where he's just kind of cussed ties with EBS at this point. And why I think this is important later is because Eric July being friends with these guys, them being in the same circle, circle when somebody's pissed about um, over somebody and there's drama going on, uh, that can start to affect other people inside the circle. And that's why I say that the drama kind of starts with the Zack Snyder incident. Um, and I will get more details when we get closer to that uh, breakup between Eric and EBS. Uh, but if anybody needs to bail, they can bail. I understand. Um, Jason Smoot gives us two hundred dollars on Streamlab. Uh, it's a Streamlab donation. Yes, it's a Streamlab donation. Um, and it says, and this is to As, but I'm going to answer the question first. Um, as and everyone else, EBS spent almost two full live streams apologizing. Uh, we understand if you want to uh, still be upset, but the man all but begged you not to be angry. We all have a common enemy, and you're absolutely right, Jason. You're absolutely one hundred percent. I'm aware that uh, Ethan did that, and that's fine. Uh, Ethan, uh, I wish Ethan all the best in his. Do you mind if I take someone up first, guy? Well, it's too late. I'm, I'm not going to worry. <laughs> I also want to mention this is an important clip because if you talk to people, they claim that Gary never tried to patch things up. Uh, now, maybe they know about this, maybe they don't, but uh, they could also be maybe referring to other little small things that have happened to kind of like say that Gary's kind of been working behind the curtains to kind of facilitate other people, uh, facilitate the bridge burning between EBS, kind of saying that he's like, he doesn't like him, so he's kind of behind the curtains doing that. Uh, that's hearsay to me. Uh, I think he honestly was trying to patch it because I think everyone could see especially with current, uh, what's going on currently with the Indy Sphere, that this is, uh, the fight between Eric and uh, EVS is bad. It's bad for everyone, uh, and everyone's probably losing money off of this. The only one that's really probably gaining more money off of this right now, currently, is EVS. He's making a shit ton of money off of his streams. Um, a big part of this is because he's, he's just got the art and talent to back, back up what he says with the stuff. <laughs> Let me, let me set the stage here because because uh, I think it's better if they hear it from me because I'm aware of this stuff because it's, it's coming on Friday night tights. Okay, and okay. I gotta I gotta mention how. I'm, uh, so um, Ethan uh, can do his thing. I don't care what Ethan does. Uh, Ethan's made four million dollars on um, campaigns on seventeen or eighteen campaigns. Uh, he's got a great life. Uh, he is doing everything an independent artist should be doing. I, we have done nothing but support him. Last time he was on the show, we helped him raise thousands of dollars. That was the last time we really spoke. We talked about doing some other stuff together. It just didn't happen yet. Um, but uh, Cyber Frog, thank you for correcting me on that, Jim. What well, I, I really didn't give a shit enough. <laughs> No, not yet, Ellington. He did diddle a cat. I started out with the cat stuff. So, if you missed that, you'll have to go back for him diddling a cat. What, uh, I can't speak for Az, uh, but what I can say is this stuff, it's more than just uh, what Az said. There has been stuff being, I'm aware of everything that's been said about me, my show, my co-host, and everything on the internet, okay? People make me aware. I get sent clips. I, I subscribe to these channels. I watch the live streams. I watch what's being said on Twitter. I see what's being said in the chat, and you never hear me say anything. You want to know why? Because I don't care. I don't have a fragile ego. I don't give a shit. Um, I'm not in the drama. I'm fucking 51. I don't play fucking games. Um, but you there has been, thank you, there has been stuff being said for a very long time, including accusations of, of all kinds of stuff. And I don't care. They are free to say it. I am, I am here to fight the battle, the big battle. I'm not here to get into little squabbling anything with YouTubers ever. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, mainly because 
uh, we want to see better content out there, no matter what the meat. And this fight is, is does the opposite. I just think uh, from what happened with EVS and Eric, I think he kind of saw EVS as a snake, and that's kind of how I see him. And uh, he just called it a lot earlier, and just uh, not accepting the fact that uh, his words were just uh, misinterpreted. EVS's words. Are I don't play. My DMs work. They're open. My email works. It's open. If anybody has an issue with me or what I do, or if they think I'm just being angry to be angry, uh, they can ask me. They can ask me. But I actually care about this shit. I am into this culture war to fucking win it. I actually believe this shit. I may be a big fucking dummy, but I actually believe this shit. And I think if we're fighting amongst each other, our detractors and the fucking big tech, they fucking win every time. So I completely agree with you, Jason. We gotta keep our eye on the prize and actually just focus on that stuff. And whatever people say is what people say. As. Uh, yeah, Jason, to, to answer your question, uh, EBS did spend two streams uh, saying sorry to you. On my behalf, he, like Gary just said, he can get hold of me. So this gets, I think, misinterpreted by a lot of people. What his intent is there? He's kind of being a little vague. Is what he means is, uh, uh, because the apology wasn't direct. <laughs> yeah, Ellington. Yeah, Vito. Vito had some intimate relations with his cat at one point. Uh, it involves a Q-tip, which is where the where the comic book s cover of the crying Q-tip and the cat comes from. That's why it's on there. <laughs> and if you if you got a copy of the thumbnail and you zoom in on it you could actually see uh saying hey that's Vito's cat and the cat and the q-tip are saying please eric save us <laughs> uh but yeah um so what is going on here now again i'm gonna keep going over the timeline just so that we keep on top of everything Zack Snyder makes the remarks on Friday Night Tights against Geeks and Gamers. EVS speaks out on behalf of Geeks and Gamers against Friday Night Tights and uh, Zack Snyder because he doesn't like them, even though he's pulling some of the same grifting that they do. Um, in this, Geeks and Gamers gets mad at Ethan for sticking his nose in where it doesn't belong. Ethan then, Ethan then does two apology streams apologizing to most of the geeks and gamers um about what he did and he feels and it's kind of getting misinterpreted this guy thinks uh but they feel like they're getting slighted a bit by ethan's apology so that's kind of really all that's going on here <laughs> i know it's a lot of a lot of clips but the clips the clips are there for a good purpose and they do highlight parts of the story so now we're going to see Ethan responding to the clip that you just saw. So we'll go and ahead. I like to concentrate on, uh, and I love my fucking co-hosts. And, and my ego is not fragile enough that I have to accept an apology for somebody while they slide off the rest of my co-hosts. Okay? Uh, Friday night yeah, and that's where I think uh, the, the real root of it is. It's like, you don't get to just insult my, uh, my co-workers. And EBS never apologized about any of that, and I don't, I don't see why, <laughs> why he needed to insult them in the first place. That's what I think. All right. Uh, and this is just kind of get uh, EVS's uh, reaction to this. To talk about it. Gary's like, I got this situation. We just want to make peace here. Gary handled the Doomcock situation elegantly. He did. I, I uh, stream sniped him during the... How's it going, Jim? This conversation where he was just like... Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you all right. Okay. I wanted to just drop in here. And um, so EVS, like, originally back in 94, was the ori original run of Cyberfrog. Okay. And in 98, he got a job at DC, and he worked on, like, The Flash and stuff like that. And then in 2001, he went to Marvel and did some work at Marvel until 2016, 2017. And then um, he ended up getting – now, this is contentious because he said because he was conservative in comics. And as you know, the culture war was big back then, and DC and um, Marvel have been very liberal. Yep. And other people have said that it was corporate politics. He just pissed off the wrong person and he got blacklisted. Oh. Marvel and DC. That, so he, so this is, you know, his word versus this other, like, insider's words. And that he came out in 2017 and started, like, you know, doing the whole conservative, I was ousted because of my politics, to try to then start a sequel series to Cyber Frog, which is what he is doing now. Oh my god. Yeah, so and it, you took a 20 year hiatus on this comic. Yes, yes, and he made the <laughs> sequel series after he supposedly got fired for conservative values, but from what I've seen from like some like 
comic stuff is that he actually was a lefty. He like voted for Obama and then he, everything. He just pissed somebody off within. I... I the could industry. see the latter, the latter being more correct, um, because I've seen him. Well, I've seen him flip flop on his fucking values already. I mean, just watching some of this past stuff. To then, if I watch some of the Nick Ricada stuff, you could see him flip flop. And what's funny is, is that the most honest I've seen him is when he actually uh, reviewed Isom, yeah, and that actually and, and... was more just devoid of politics completely. Yeah, but you can also see that he did it, and he was. A little bit nitpickier because he didn't like Eric. Yep. Oh, yeah. So you can kind of see how he would rub somebody the wrong way and piss somebody yep. off in the chain. And with them being very political now, even DC and Marvel, I had no problem believing that they have, like, well, we need to spread the politics message. So while we compete, we also sort of, like, you know, have, like, this blacklist. And I can see him pissing someone off and then going into the grifting with the conservative i was fired from my politics look at me and <laughs> trying to stage himself as like an early version of like gina carano yep you know yeah. what i mean yeah I, like, I got fired for that and then he started doing sci this cyber frog sequel series and it was something he's wanted to do for a while but yet somehow it just never materialized because he was so busy working for dc and marvel until suddenly he wasn't <laughs> okay so he was he was blacklisted yeah you know i really i think it was because of the fucking pissing somebody off i could just see that him sticking his nose in places it doesn't belong i could see him making an off-putting comment to someone too like I, I very easily on some of the stuff that i've seen from him uh if you want to say that's your conservative values uh, i just i could see him saying something off-putting and somebody take it the wrong way, even as much as like, oh, you look very pretty or something. <laughs> well, have, have you seen, um, there was a Kino Casino thing where Worski said this. Have you heard of the War Council? No. So Worski was saying about how um, there's this thing called the War Council, which is where EVS um, has like this little, like, I guess you could say like bully cabal, like what people think the Sweetie Squad is. <laughs> where he would have people go out and harass people in comics gate the movement that he started or was a pivotal thing in yeah in order to get into the war council you have to post a picture of your genitals oh jesus christ yeah. Yeah, you have to post a dick pic, so then that way, it's kind of like the whole, like, you know, are you a cop? If you want in, you have to do this drugs right in front of us. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to incriminate yourself, so that way we know you're locked in. Wow, that's some skewed fucking values. Holy shit. Yeah, and, and now, mind you, this is what Worski said, so I, you know, take it with some salt, because, you know, as much as I love Worski and the, and the Casino Boys... They are also entertainment, but given how we've seen EVS on stream sometimes, yep, you can sort of see where uh, he wouldn't be past. I wouldn't put gay ops past anyone. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. No, I, I don't know, but yeah, I think it's funny the whole uh, I was canceled fucking shtick. The fact that he fucking pulled that—that's such a disingenuous fucking piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, speaking of that, um I think it's funny that like the the rift that is gonna be caused between Eric July and EVS starts from Zack Snyder. <laughs> this is this is truly butterfly effect level shit, but it's kind of funny. I wanna show this because it kind of reconfirms that Gary was in fact trying to uh patch things up and I think EVS saw that, so uh did more things happen, yes, but I, I think for argument's sake, especially if you're on Twitter, it, no, Gary tried to patch this up. Until we get any other evidence, otherwise, that's what happened. All right, let me play a little bit of this. It's more, a lot of ads ranting on this. These are from the same uh, podcast we just watched, though. I know. Back in my face. Okay. Uh, Friday Night Tights is growing. Yeah, it wasn't a good apology. Uh, I, I think he's trying to claim that there are people missing. And it's thanks to people like yourself and others that are coming into the stream. I'm going to pause and scrub, but just so everybody understands the timeline again, again on this stuff. So we had Zack Snyder on Friday Night Tights, Friday Night Tights. Uh, is hosting a charity event with Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder then makes a somewhat insulting statement about Geeks and Gamers. Uh, Ethan, who is apparently like the fucking white knight for Geeks and Gamers, comes out and speaks against Friday Night Tights, as well as Zack Snyder, um, even though Ethan is doing stuff that 
he uh he's kind of criticizing others for so like he's marketing off of criticisms and stuff like that but his justification is, is hey i'm an artist they're not um and so from this basically uh geeks and gamers says uh hey we're, we're not cool with the shit that you said you don't need to defend us and then ethan goes on this big apology arc and so that kind of gets us to where we're at and basically a lot of people are saying yeah your apology sucked man so uh, this finally gets us into the evs eric july stuff I'm gonna go back five seconds and we'll start i'm here. trying to make this go faster but sorry guys all right um all right so while all that happened um again before the actual rift between evs and air july and i will mention here a, a good part of this rift was because uh i saw wasn't that great it wasn't uh i kind of enjoyed the first one it was okay in my opinion. second one i enjoyed but generally speaking it wasn't that great um and with the ever-growing drama between him and dick masterson and just all these other people that's eric july kind of created this whole monetizer haters mentality he kind of made himself a target and there at that point it's like the product really needs to be good to kind of like shut your haters up but it, it wasn't good enough to do that um he opened him up so himself up to a lot of crit uh, potential criticism there and then there was a lot of dmca claims and i bring this up uh i, I say dmca i don't know if all these were dmca or they were just uh uh what's it called when you mark somebody as copyright strikes it's, it's a little bit different right um either way it's important no, because that thing. apparently <laughs> upset people like ebs it upset uh jada it kind of upsets uh this growing divide in the by the way for anybody that doesn't realize dmca and copyright are the same thing it's digital millennia copyright act is dmca so a copyright claim and a dmca claim are the same thing <laughs> community a little bit um and also, I should mention, Dick and Vito, like, they're on the EVS side of this whole situation right now, and they also uh, integral into creating this divide that we are at right now. <sighs> oh, all right. So, fucking love it when uh, people fucking do that. Right, I'm never going to do that. Now I'm going to just check a soda just so I can drop one on you. Yeah. <laughs> but here's something <laughs> that I want to pick apart here. Yep. No, when he says that I saw him wasn't a success by what standards uh, he's just going he's looking at it from he's actually in the position of he doesn't uh he's not against uh eric july at all he actually is just looking at a kind of neutral this guy is so i'm gauging that he just either didn't like the story or didn't like the art but uh, you know some clarity would have been nice well yeah because like like let's take uh for example i'm a huge gamer video games for example um MMOs, one of my biggest uh, favorites in the genre. At what point is it a success? Because like Final Fantasy XI has been running 20 years. Would you say it's a failure? Because it only has 20,000 people, but that's 20,000 people paying every month. Eric yeah. July is selling $1.8 million of ISOM 2. Is that really a failure? Sure, it wasn't the three point something that he made from ISOM 1, but he has carved out a fairly substantial loyal fan base yeah would that not be considered a you, success that he has enough to stay running yeah you also have to understand another thing folks each of the issues is like a graphic novel in itself it's like if you look at the website right now it's like 48 dollars yeah for one issue but it's not like it's not like it's not like a 16 page issue it's literally like a a sexy boy yeah, yeah. So it's, what we're it's a about. full fledged book. Yeah. So what are we talking about here? So I like I, I just don't think that people are even giving it enough time. I I I would go as far as to say, remove the rose tinted glasses, whatever you want to call it, the hindsight twenty twenty. You are in nineteen sixty four, sixty five, I can't remember exactly when, but roughly around that time, and you read Spider Man number one. Are you giving it a rave review? Or are you going to give it a rave review because of the nostalgia, because of the rose tinted glasses and all that? Like, you know, I'd love to know how many number one and number twos uh, they would they would stand behind. Like, uh, there's there's a lot of stuff. I believe one of them, oh, um, Captain America, if I recall right, had some like overt racism in it. Oh yeah. Like, like would you would you be willing to still say that that's a highly successful comic removing the rose tinted goggles of everyone loved it. It became a successful franchise. You can't really gauge the franchise off of two issues. 
exactly and i mean still 1.8 like like i said like yeah every every initial thing like everything from video games to tv shows to comics the initial first thing it's gonna be huge yeah and then people will check out and you'll have the fans that stay the question is does eric july have enough to run his business and i feel like if he's selling 1.8 that's a fairly sizable niche yeah that's a huge niche that you could easily run a yeah. comic book and then on top of that on. we're not even talking about the other two spin-off series that he's also had that have both put out issues since then exactly i mean look like look at comic books like you know i'm a huge fan of of the crow how much how many issues do you think of the crow have sold yeah back then you yeah. know it's it was now it's legendary yeah. because of the movie with brandon lee but like you know it it you don't need to be making 30, 40, 50 millions into the billions like yeah. these massive media companies. If he's successful and can put out his art on a regular basis, unlike some of the people here that we're discussing, I would say that's more of a success than some of the people criticizing him because he's at least being able to put it out. Well, not only that, I feel like a lot lands squarely on his shoulders. Uh, like, it's his comic, okay? One of the biggest criticisms I've seen is of the art and i would say yeah some of the art in the comic that i've seen uh first issue not the best i i wasn't particularly a fan of it it's not like it really pops or draws me in in any way shape or form artistically and so and it's just gets down to it and uh when i was watching ethan's criticisms of it it's basically oh well that's because these are 3d models and stuff like that okay well are they doing that because of scalability like from what I can see, they only have three people working on this comic. Are they trying to do something so that way, because to keep their costs low, so they can keep producing this stuff and keep producing it efficiently? So maybe there is a little bit of uh, sacrifice made? Yeah, and that's like, you know, where you see, like, for example, double A video games, movies like Sharknado. Yeah. Stuff like that, where you have like a niche market and you can sacrifice what's not necessary for your core audience yeah. maybe the core audience isn't concerned about how the shade is drawn from the lamp they're concerned with i'm supporting this parallel economy with a guy that's promised to not inject politics into his comics and it's a story that i can jive with yeah why not well and then on top of that like Overall, aside from Dick Masterson, I've not encountered anybody, and I tried looking for a different a couple different reviews of it. I've not encountered anybody that disliked the story. That was the big thing. So would you call his comic a failure because of the artwork that he didn't actually draw or color? So like how much of that burden can you put on his shoulders? Exactly. And like you said, scalability. Like, you know, at this point, like are you gonna mm. like argue this the semantic philosophies of what's a success yeah because right now you know super killer hasn't come out no you know how many cyber frogs backlogged like i mean eric released his product yeah like can we really say that he's you know a failure or that it's not art because art's subjective i mean we've seen art pieces where there's naked people standing on paint and that's considered art yeah yeah, like, there's, what, there's the banana. Like, like, do you guys know what I'm talking about when I say the banana? Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> this actually was quite a funny story. But just to give you a perception of art, uh, banana. This was literally an art exhibit. <laughs> and it famously got eaten. <laughs> but it was put up by this artist and it literally was a banana taped to the wall. That's... Yeah, and that's and that's just the kind of stuff that you know I'm trying I I want to bring up here. It's like, can we really say that Isom has been a success or a failure? Like, yeah, as of right now, he's still making product. <laughs> exactly, and it's and it's not a banana tape to a wall. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's it's substantially better than that. So yeah, I mean, do you call it then a success because it's better than a banana tape to a wall? But it's not as successful as you know, what probably like superman's 2500th issue or something like that or 250th issue like come on where where do we like where where do we gauge this stuff how are we gauging this stuff 
and like you're mad at him because he didn't willingly and gracefully accept the criticisms that were levied against him it's his choice whether he wants to accept those criticisms or not yeah and it reminds me of a ted talk i saw with jeff vogel um i don't know if you've ever heard of him <sighs> the name vaguely sounds familiar he makes a lot of like um uh, computer role playing games like Gene Forge and stuff like that. Like he made that, okay. and he's been doing game design for twenty years, all the way back from like the mid and early nineties, like with like Gene Forge and stuff. And he's doing remasters and stuff. And he had this TED talk, and it's really interesting because the point that you brought up with like the the three D things is what he said. You're creating, you have a market. And you want to create it for your market. He's like, I've been using the same tree model for 20 years. <laughs> but I I paid that tree. I own that tree. Yeah. And that tree does work. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter what it's done in, it doesn't matter how it's used, that tree puts in work and it and it works. Yeah. So like Eric July, like when you're like saying about like how he's has some of these assets, well what's the the market? Is the market gonna care about that? No, it's, it's it, he's taking the Jeff Vogel approach, or he's taking the assets he already has and he's just putting them together in a way that he can make a product that's sustainable. And I think that's more successful than using a Kickstarter that you're like three years behind on. Yeah, yeah, like, and, and they even play more into that. Like, like okay, so let's say Vito's art is gonna be, uh, superior, right? Let's say because it's hand-drawn art, it's superior, it's drawn better, it's going to be colorized better and everything else. Well, if it's a visually more appealing, but the story also sucks, then is it just successful because the art is different? Like, well, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't get this whole like weighing things the way they're weighing them. It, it seems like you're you're doing the the semantics of the fan base semantics type argument. It is because like, you know, EVS can be like, well, I'm an artist, so I can argue from this authority. Yeah. This is why it's not good. Uh, Dick, I wrote a book, so yeah. I know literature. I'm in LA, I'm in Hollywood. I sold scripts so I can critique the story. They're all arguing from this like authority position. And that's all they have is the authority position. And that works, but it also then shows bias, like in EVS's case. Yeah. When you're trying, when you're saying you're doing a review, but you're nitpicking at such little things, it looks like it comes more across as a takedown commentary piece than it does critique of the actual product. Yeah. Yeah. There's even, there's even more that plays into EVS's thing. The dude got paid a thousand dollars to review ISOM number one. He stressed out, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. Okay, pay me a thousand dollars. And somebody actually fucking paid him a thousand dollars. Yeah. And it's somebody like had. he didn't have to be uh he doesn't have to be uh genuine or anything because of that thousand dollars because it came from a fan. They just want to see him shit on it. So then, you know, how much of his uh his criticisms are skewed just because he's playing service to his fan base. That, and that's also a fair point. Like, how much of that is already biased because you're selling to an audience and not the actual honesty? Yeah, yeah. I mean, his audience physically paid him a thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so this, this is uh, well, I don't even need to. Uh, this is Eric's tweet on the screen right now, kind of dismissing the the DMC A claims. And I will say, um, I get that somebody, some people post like thirty pages or so like that, and that seems egregious. I can kind of understand if that was taken down um i look this one is kind of up in the air i i don't necessarily know if some of these uh strikes were unnecessary or not i don't uh i don't have the D this is a whole nother side of the argument so basically eric july filed a couple of dmca strikes for people putting his comic out there now it's one of those things that i kind of side with him because even though yes he's made a lot of money he's still small in comparison of the market share that he's representing so anytime that his exposure is going to be put in jeopardy and he might lose sales and might lose revenue, I would be kind of like closely guarding on top of that myself. Like I'm, it kind of is an asshole thing to do, but it's not like we're talking about like, uh, oh, like a Marvel or a DC or something like that, where they, they can technically lose having the comic be out there because of all the other points of income for them. 
He only well, has not... at this point like one point of income because we only have Isom number one. Well, not just that, but that's actually kind of a fair use of the DMCA. Like yeah. you're actually putting out my product without my consent. Yeah, that's not like he's taking down criticism. And and it's one of those things like to bring back Jeff Vogel. The reason he can have a company that's just him and his wife, where he makes a game every two to three years, is because he has a customer base that he can rely on to buy his product. If yep. everybody can get Eric July's product for free, he's not having a business. Nope. And this is one of those few cases where DMCA law, I think, actually fairly applies. Because nope. it's not like you're saying that this is a bad product and people are leaking the actual full product. I mean, how many times have we seen OnlyFans people go after people for leaking their products? Yep, their paywalled stuff and everything else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So but it's like, why is this different? Because it's a physical book? There is one unique thing here that got me thinking it was a really unique uh, argument in a way. So basically, at one point, somebody that he DMCA striked on on Twitter, I believe, um, copied and just posted a link to another social media page that had his comic in entirety. And so he DMCA striked the, the tweet as well as the as the link holder. Do you think that was an abusive thing or not? Because I've seen both arguments, and both arguments, I feel like it could go either way. In my opinion, I think it's fair because it's still it's it's a link to where the product is. Like on Facebook, have you ever seen it on Facebook where you get comments of like, "Check this movie, watch it free at you know," and it's some phone app APK to get free movies. Yep. Like it's it's a link yep. to get the product for free. Putting his product being illegally posted. So personally, I think that it's fair because it's not criticism. It's not fair use. He's literally telling you where to get it as an alternate to the market. Like, cause it's not substituting. It's su directly substituting Eric July's comment comic on the market. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I, that's how I kind of felt too. Um, it's just that matter of like, look, you, you know, you might not be directly the one hosting it or anything else, but you're, you're saying, okay, you know, do this process and it's free. Like, I think of systems that have been in place like this that have been easily abused. Like, uh, it was a known thing. Okay, so, like, I know some of the Disney adult stuff. So, like, for Disney adults, there was a loophole to get a free t-shirt from Disney for a long time. And their shirts are kind of expensive, right? And all it came down to was a woman had to... Uh, wear a shirt that exposed her midriff and they would be given a voucher upon entry to go to the Disney store to then get a free shirt. Well, then people were doing that and then reselling the shirts and stuff like that, or just using it as an exploit. So it's like, it became a detriment enough for them that they have now killed that policy. Now it's just a little bit of money off or you, you need to leave. So, yeah, and, and, and then we get to that, that weird sort of thing of like, just because it's not it, it's sort of in a way encouraging you to break the law yeah it's it's almost sort of like you know well i'm not the one posting his copyright but you're the one putting a spotlight where you can get it so it, you're also kind of at fault because <clears throat> you're literally promoting that it you're goes promoting back to, the act uh, of stealing it it goes back to the napster thing i mean we both grew up in that generation where you had napster and and person-to-person -person file sharing services like that that got taken down through the exact same system because they yeah. were sharing and allowing availability of content that belonged to others yeah yeah and guess what you would have people you you you, you went after napster and lime wire and stuff like that but then you also put up for people that seeded the torrent yep that's the same sort of concept yep so, yeah, I mean, if, if I had to present it in that argument, I would. Um, I don't know. I just feel like the whole veil of, like, well, it wasn't them hosting the content. is just very thin because they're still providing. They're providing the door and showing how to open it, but then just leaving the door there and walking away kind of thing. Like, it's too much. Yeah, you're inadvertently causing, like, a um, call to arms yeah. or a call to action to go take this. Yeah, you know, like it, it's like you know, yelling fire in a crowded theater. You know, that's not freedom of speech. That's you know, a command to flee, run, and if somebody gets hurt and it's fake, then 
you cause that by f- you know causing people to flee yep. this isn't freedom of speech of like you know i think eric's book is bad this is go take this book yeah yeah why pay him when you can go here for free exactly and that's the that's where i would fall on the line of like it's literally enabling the the breaking of dmca law yep details of them the only other I, i've tried to look at some of them but it's it's too much uh information to kind of cycle through i do know um one of the uh, strikes at least was against uh, the geek getaway which i appeared on one of his uh shows before he, he was nice to me um we debated a little bit but uh so there's a, a claim this seems andrew rodriguez which i believe is works for the riververse and it looks like it's a no shit um this is exactly the situation i'm talking about i forgot that he had it in this video so yeah this this is literally that exact same situation that we just discussed so i'm gonna jump forward a bit doing the same thing as that illegal or you know dmc strikeable offense just by proxy um so even if you are allowed to do it uh it's still fucked up and also i can totally understand somebody trying to uh, strike you for that uh believing that it is an offense even if it's not you you can definitely see somebody making a slight mistake even so it's 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 a uh, illegally downloading or copying this stuff by uh by proxy uh, i think this is a bullshit uh uh hit at eric for it like glad you didn't get actually strike for something since you didn't break any actual rules but still come on man that, that, that's bullshit all right so again this is a big one uh the dick masterson incident and, and so- this is we've already seen so this is we've already seen this where dick comes on debates uh eric july i think he plays a pretty good chunk of this so i kind of want to skip ahead Okay, I did not play any of this, but let's see. This is just the argument between them, and then we get into casino. Okay, I will see what his points were with this because I don't remember totally. I don't know if this is going to necessarily apply as much as I hope or not. Um, I guess uh, you know what this the Nick situation happened first. Okay, now Nick Ricada. If you know Nick Ricada, um. <laughs> He kind of bought I guess he's friends with Dick, and um, yeah, I, I guess Eric thought he could uh, kind of debate Nick about this whole situation. Oh, man. Oh, I forgot I have to go into this. Uh, essentially, <laughs> somebody visited his warehouse. <laughs> Pez, I'm in line with your thought process. I just cannot publicly endorse that because I value my internet service provider, <laughs> and I do nothing of that sort. Ever. Ever. Right? Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep this short. Shit. Somebody went to his warehouse who is a hater of Eric, and he's, I think, a producer in Dick and Vito's show. And he just trolled them. He, like, put some money on their warehouse, and it created this whole backlash where Eric started claiming that he could he could shoot them and all this other stuff and legal action, blah, 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 blah. Um, Nick Kita, I guess, was kind of, was siding with Dick, basically. I assume they're the friends. Uh, saying that, like, look, I, I don't, I don't agree that you should do this, uh, do what that guy did, but uh, it's it's perfectly legal, um, and that's kind of where Eric kind of wanted to argue with him, and I think Eric kind of lost his debate, and uh, yeah, I would actually agree. I did watch this debate in entirety. Um, Eric July does a piss poor, uh, in my opinion, job of defending his position that he feels like this was. Uh, um, uh, kind of like going on to private property and stuff like trespassing and all that. So <laughs> he just he just does a terrible fucking job at defending that point against Nick. I will, but I also I'll I'll kind of push back here a little bit. He was going into the stream thinking Nick was friendly and wouldn't be as disingenuous as he was. Yeah, I as much as I as you know I don't like Nick. Um. I do think Nick was trying to be somewhat um impartial, you know, un, unbiased to some extent. Um, I mean, I feel like he obviously has uh, alliances that lie with Dick Masterson, so he was never going to be 100% impartial. But uh, I do think he tried to remain somewhat impartial, but he just... Eric wasn't understanding Nick's uh, perspective of, okay, legally, this is how it is. And Nick wasn't understanding, okay, but, like, this is what happened. And this is what I can prove, you know? So it kind of became a, they were both missing the point. 
Yeah, and that's kind of what I mean by like, you know, him being a little disingenuous because I don't think Nick was that dumb on accident. Yeah. In my opinion, I think it was a little bit malicious to try to make Eric look bad because it's like, that's why I don't, you know, argue with lawyers about law. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it's one of those things where it's like, it's, you know, I, I kind of see where you're coming from, but I kind of disagree a little bit because I think going into it, Eric would have been like, yeah, well, I talked to a lawyer and like, you know, if I have employees that feel threatened, isn't that castle doctrine? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I have employees, because Eric has said publicly, too, it's not just me you're going after, it's my employees. Yeah. And they're not me. Yeah. You know, like, and they it... might not be cool with it. And I think Nick was kind of, like, being disingenuous and sort of be like, well, it was night, and, and then, you know, it. no one was there. Well, now what happens? Because then we got the meetup at the restaurant, and how yeah. many people were, or the convention center, or wherever it was, how many people there? Yep. And there were innocent people there. And what happens if Riley went insane? Yep. Yeah, it's just a matter of him him escalating, you know. And it's uh, yeah, I can kind of see that. I don't know if Nick was necessarily then. I I could think of two ways. Was Nick being disingenuous, um, to basically prove his point? You know what I mean? Like that kind of legal aspect of being disingenuous. Like, oh well, do you think all all uh all Asian people are great at math kind of like argument. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, all government planted Coke on him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, we've, seen, we've seen how he can, tw- how he'll twist things like, you know, so before all of this stuff with the drugs, I could, I would side with you, but after, <laughs> yeah, I guess seeing... now having the, now having the rose tinted glasses for that. Yeah. Yeah, I I could probably change. I could probably be swayed more to be in him being disingenuous on purpose just because. Yeah. Either way, uh, where uh, are we at now? Currently, Nick Ricade is kind of a locale. I, I think uh, I was watching a clip of the uh, TV Farms. I guess it's claiming he's the locale of the year. So that's an interesting. Thing. I don't know. Uh, it's a sad point. I'm not going to go into tangents. Uh, this was this was uh, four months ago, by the way. <laughs> This is back in January. This was this was during sober January for Nick <laughs> that he that he made that statement. <laughs> it's about Nick Rukid and uh, what's going on with him currently. But all right, oh, why did I have this go pulled up? Fuck, oh, sorry guys. Oh, yeah. Drinking when you're married with five, six, seven fucking children in your forties. How about act your fucking age? How about grow up and accept the responsibilities of your life? Fuck, man, I'm 27 years old. I don't go out fucking drinking and partying no. anymore. Well, I don't fucking drink. I don't know why I played that. That's not fair. All right. I resend that from the record. All right. <clears throat> Here's a picture, like, on the same weekend. Okay. Um, so this is where we get the context of the first escalation. Or no, sorry. Second escalation from Riley. Uh, so we have him going to the warehouse, putting the money on the building. Then on top of it, he goes to... I believe this is uh, Eric July's great grandfather's gravesite, which is fucking weird. Okay, this is a little beyond like this is like some IRL trolling shit, and I just don't know how comfortable I would be with it. Um, like if someone went to my dad's grave, I'd be fucking weirded out. Like the fuck are you doing? So well, I and, understand Eric's position here. <laughs> and here's the thing: he's not just saying I'm going to your grandfather's grave. He said, I'm going to go piss on it. You're li- he's literally saying that I'm going to go desecrate your family member's grave that was in- that inspired this comic. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's another escalation to the point where it's like, okay, well, like I said earlier in chat, at what point is, is Riley-, Riley allowed to cross this line, this line, this line, this line? Yeah, yeah. When does he go from troll to threat? Like, what, what, what is threat? I mean, you could easily say, yeah, look, go into the building and uh, leaving leaving the money stuck uh, taped to the building and all that. Yeah, that doesn't seem that good, big, but now he's kind of saying, I know where you're at kind of thing. You could take it in that respect. Well, and now he's showing up to public events dressed up as a superhero screaming about ISOM when people are just trying to enjoy a comic book. Like, now you're yeah. involving normies. If this is strange. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very fucking strange. As that whole warehouse thing, or uh, maybe a following weekend. This guy, I think it's the same guy. 
visited the grave of uh I saw Eric's like great great grandfather. Uh very crazy, very stalkery, very fucking weird. Uh it's a troll, but and this kind of uh made a big change into how Eric is doing business. That's why he stopped. I know everything's uh kind of convenient for him to stop the um monetize your haters thing, but he, as you can see, he attracted the trolls and <clears throat> he attracted the crazies and therefore putting his people, his employees in danger, and so he's trying to stop doing that. <laughs> stop trying to antagonize the crazies, essentially. If you don't know who on the internet is fucking crazy. Um, so that's why I believe he's, he stopped doing that stuff, and I, I think that's true. Alright, the night letter. I'm gonna be a hundred with you. Alright, so, the night letter. Uh, and for context, he dropped this night letter around the same time all this other stuff, the, <clears throat> the, all that harassment thing kind of stuff was going so on. So this is a third escalation. Again, this seems very similar to the situation that happened with FNT. It feels opportunist. It felt like it's like right now is the time to strike. Uh, I felt like he was building a divide between, well, because of this text message, um, kind of like siding with uh, Dick and getting this text. <clears throat> he kind of was like, it felt like he was just kind of waiting for his opportunity to, to release this to the public. So, all right, let me read it for you. Sorry, I sacrificed I'm going to be 100 with you <clears throat> and not be public for this. You've gone out of your way to play the uh, middle of the road publicly with a dude that has gone out of his way to work overtime to publicly fame. To me, it is whack. It's even weaker that you lend credence to their narrative. I treat you like I do anybody else in this space, and I do not use my platform to amplify, amplify narratives that go against others I'm cool with. Everybody I do stream show streams knows not to bring up any gripes with people I'm cool with, as uh, I will not give it the time of day. I'm uh, I'm going to start reciprocating on that. If you want to chat about it, I'm free to call. Okay. So essentially what this is, <clears throat> and what I think, so he obviously EBS, he's, he's, he sees this as a threat. I see this more as... Um, just, just stating his position. That's how I see it. Like, this is Eric messaging this to EBS. Basically saying, look, I need you to know my position on this stuff. That's it. Like, that's how I see this shit. To not talk shit about you. That's not, like, actively going out to attack him. That's just, I'm just gonna... Look, you, you obviously don't have my back... Why do I have your back? Um, you're you're defending this guy who's trying to destroy my business. And what I think, we look at the ads, right? The whole Zack Snyder incident and stuff like that, as is not cool with EBS. FNT, kind of at this point, not really cool with EBS. Eric July goes on streams with them. And he probably, before the show starts or anything like that, it's like, hey, I know you're not cool with EBS. Don't bring it up because he's my boy. Uh, I'm just not going to take that. They're like, cool, let's have a stream. Uh, and this is all. Uh, Potentially not true, but I really believe that's kind of how those situations are going. And he's looking after that whole tobacco with Dick. He's looking at this like, why, is, why, why am I defending this guy? Or why am I telling people not to talk shit about him? He's perfectly fine with people coming out here and talking shit about me and telling me I have to take their criticism. It's bullshit. So I know a lot of people, if you watch this, probably going to disagree with me, but that's, that's my Okay, so to give the rundown again. So we have Zack Snyder makes a comment on Friday Night Tights about geeks and gamers. EBS comes in, defends Geeks and Gamers, um, and speaks out against Friday Night Tights and uh, Eric Snyder. And so Geeks and Gamers then gets mad at EBS for doing this and basically says, hey, you should apologize. EBS kind of apologizes, even though it's half-assed. In this time, um, there is the Dick Masterson and Eric July debate that we've already gone over. Um, and then the stuff with Riley starts first, it starts out with him, um, posting, uh, stuff that may or may not have been, uh, or that was DMCA striked copyright striked. And so that's how Riley young Clipper gets Eric's warehouse address from this. He then proceeds to escalate it by going to Eric's great grandfather's gravesite, the person who inspired the ISOM con comic. And posing with stuffed animals and a mask on and stuff like that. And threatening to piss and desecrate the grave. So uh, in between all of this, also you have Eric July uh, and Dick Masterson stuff escalating. And now uh, EBS is put in a position where he's got to either start siding with uh, Eric July and keep continuing that. Or he's going to have to go with Dick Masterson. And he's kind of cool with both people and he's been fence sitting. And so Eric kind of comes at him and says, look, you know, I, I know you've been fence sitting. I need you to kind of decide and, you know, you don't have to do anything, but just understand that I'm going to start retaliating and escalating and reciprocating in his words to this stuff that's been going on. 
and EBS is now kind of seeing this as a threat from Eric um, instead of him just sitting his position and stating that he needs Ethan to pick a position. So that's kind of where we're at at this point. My opinion on it. <clears throat> you see it as a threat, that's fine. So at this point, um, <clears throat> this is released publicly, and it's official. Uh, Eric and EBS hate each other. So that's kind of the history of this. Um, I do have this a little bit out of order. I thought he had a clip somewhere with Rakita, basically Eric going to him, or Rakita saying like, hey, uh, or Eric saying like, you never reached out to me about this whole thing, I guess before drama was starting. And Rakita goes like, well, I checked my DMs, I checked my uh, email and everything, I never got anything from you. And Eric's like, yeah, because you're the one talking shit about me. <laughs> He's like, you, you went on streams talking shit about me. He's like, I was responding to the shit that you were talking about. Uh, I wish I had that clip to pull up, but sorry, I don't. Don't know where it went. Um, and so, to go back to how fucking creepy this shit is, I think this is the guy that showed up to the warehouse, right? Uh, and the gravesite. Yeah, with, with the, the showing up at the warehouse, right? The audio to make sure the show's not actually fucked up. All right, at the Ripper versus Alpha Core, number one quick review. I didn't really know oh. what to expect. All right, that's not weird. One sec, bear with me, guys. I got I got, I got, I got. It's, I, watch it. These guys are, I'm sorry. I, no offense, none of this was really hard to watch. Tagging himself. So uh, we have here on Twitter an obsolete platform that I don't use. That was bound to happen, definitely with the internet. And there's that was bound to happen. See, he's like, it's not even because people found out where it is that our locations are. Yes, it is. Uh, that warehouse was so much not known about where it was that some people in the hater sphere, some people were convinced that it didn't even exist. All right, he's discussing about how difficult it was to find the warehouse. This guy <laughs> really fucking went out of his way <clears throat> to find his warehouse. That's creepy. That's fucking insane. And yeah, I, I, that is something to be concerned about. If you watch this guy and you think that he's not, he's not crazy, fair, maybe he's not. But uh, if you have somebody willing to go through those uh, steps, he's probably not the only one. Uh, there's probably other people that are, that are insane, fucked up in the head, and you got to be careful with that shit. So, again, <clears throat> that's why uh, you don't really see Eric doing the uh, monetizer haters thing. He doesn't want to poke them. Don't poke the bear. All right. <laughs> what else do I got for you as I close this up right before an hour? Uh, I'm not gonna show this. This is a clip of Ethan saying that he loves drama. It's ironic. And what else do I got? Oh yes, just some irony um, of Ethan just being very fake. This is how he talked about Eric's comic before they hated each other. Um, he talked about how great it was and how good the storytelling was. And how wait, so he totally 180'd his fucking position completely. Like this is not a. I never publicly made a statement, and now my public statement is criticism. It's what I liked. The art, uh, let's see. Love my own stuff and move, not undrawn. He rocked it. So truly endorsing the art. Um, I particularly admired work like this. Uh, they exist, but artists do. I believe in his drawings. Uh, they serve the story is what I think he meant to write there. How great the art was. Um. This is a great example of somebody who is, uh, uh, let's see. He's a regular flawed human being who hasn't made perfect choices. Eric's written an actual person. The things that could use improvement, scene changes are jarring in a couple places. Uh, the Avery should be bigger on the cover. This is not stuff that he criticized later. He changed this completely. Oh, this is for, uh, ice on two. Trust. Hold on. No, but doesn't that sort of um no this is back that, number one doesn't that back the point that i was uh saying earlier about what the uh, insider's argument versus what evs's argument was yeah that he just sort of grifted to the whole yeah he... anti jw crowd because if he can flip this quickly yeah what's to say yeah he hasn't done it before and then add to it like even uh further extrapolate like you know he he was either grifting to another side of the audience with what he did or he was grifting directly to his audience when he did the disingenuous remarks on and Isom. gives you good criticism or gives you good criticism that you, uh yeah i think as called it like i don't think especially with how he talks about Isom now i don't know how you could ever mention things like this uh you're better off just not saying anything uh, i don't know how you could say all these really nice things about Isom and then just go completely 360 on it. It's just it really fucked up as, you know, as somebody as a friend being like, you know, hearing all this like criticism of your story, how bad it is currently. And then like, think it back, like, well, when 
when I showed it to you before. Still, it's it's just snake's behavior. That's kind of weird. All right. Well, hopefully, I did a good job. Okay, so that gets us through all of the backlog of the EBS arc. We now have <laughs> the EBS arc has caught up to the rest of the ongoing Eric July stuff. So that brings us into the arrest. So a bunch of shit happens. <laughs> um, I'm going to present this in a little bit of a unique way. Um, actually, I did have. Hold on. I took it out of here, but I can put it back in here really quickly. Um, his arrest, his actual arrest video. But it, it gets played a couple times, but that's kind of what leaked. Uh, boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> All right. Save the playlist. Boom. Go back here. We refresh, and it's going to be at the bottom. Yep. So we will play the game. So this is, yeah. this is the arrest what? video. Oh, my God. Pause. This is the arrest video. <laughs> this is Riley showing up to um, <laughs> one of Air July's like actual like in person events where he had it was supposed to be like a a RSVP type event. He said if anybody wanted to come out, they could come out. All you had to do was RSVP, and it was completely free. Like you could come out, you could RSVP, you could be in the event, you could talk to people and everything else, and instead this guy decides to show up and be a complete fucking whack job about shit, and just be weird, and interact weird with people who are there, uh, just trying to enjoy themselves, and just uh, have a good time, people that even don't know anything, as you'll see, about the fucking comic, and this guy shows up with copies of the comic, and he's asking questions, and he's just being fucking just awkward. What am I doing? What's up? Okay. What are they doing over there? What are they? So as you can see, a, a cape flowing from around this vehicle. On the other side of this vehicle is Riley. This is the actual arrest video. This doesn't show any of the the pretense where they were there asking people in the parking lot as they walked up to the event, like. What was their favorite thing about ISOM and giving them free copies of the comic and all that. And just, it's odd. It's fucking odd behavior. And based on all the previous stuff, at some point, the owner of the establishment, as we now know, told the police on this guy, basically saying, look, I don't like him out here harassing my customers, let alone the guy that booked us a fucking event. And so the police come, they show up, they start talking to Riley and... He ends up ending on a bad day. We'll get to that point. What are you doing? Oh, you're being arrested? Oh, they're arresting me on Quippa. Oh, shit. Chad, he's being arrested. I'm going to try and turn on. This is probably just going to be a lot of wind noise. How content brain is. Huh? You hear how content brained she is? She's like, hey, chat, look, they're arresting him, chat. Hey, chat. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is all a joke to them. Yeah. <laughs> Little did they know. <laughs> the implications of this exact moment is far deeper than, oh, he's just getting arrested and it'll be nothing. Chat, I need all the super chats for bail. Oh god, I don't know how to do this, chat. Chat, he's being arrested. What do I do? Say nothing, get an attorney. What? Okay. This is the furthest I can get, chat, by the way. Okay. Okay. Well, I can't cross that line either, because they'll arrest me if I cross this line. But it's presumed... Can I go in the, the parking lot? Can I go in the parking lot? Well, what's too close? What's too close? Well, what if I'm just behind them, trailing them? Well, what if I'm in the parking lot? Well, that doesn't help me. What if I'm just start right behind them? 
the fact that they're applauding his arrest tells you how much this guy's like annoyed and harassed people here today. <laughs> also, I just want to add, like, I'm a fat guy, right? I'm not skinny. <laughs> I have never had a shirt put on that much work. <laughs> like, that shirt wears over time. <laughs> it was all that soy tit something fierce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The hardest working thing here was the shirt. <laughs> I wonder who's bigger, her, him or Mint. Oh, man. <laughs> you know <laughs> I was going to say something I don't even know if I should say Riley may, may be very popular in, in jail <laughs> yeah, but... huh? super chats chat for bail so Riley doesn't get a <laughs> get a friend tonight I don't know Come what to on, do chat. 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 chat chat tell me what to do I don't know what to do in this situation Oh, shut up and get a lawyer? Oh, let me go over here and harass the police. <laughs> this just proves, though, that, like, how, like, mentally... And I'm not trying to sound mean, which is ironic for me, I know. <laughs> how... I don't want to say it mean-like, but, like, almost mentally deficient Mint is. Yeah. But, like, she doesn't know that immediately when you have been caught bro breaking the law to the extent that Riley has harassed this man for making a comic book that he didn't like. That's his biggest crime. That the first thing you should do is get a lawyer and not scream <laughs> chat, chat, and then go <laughs> after he's arrested, go up to chat and be like, did you hear what they did to Young Clippa? <laughs> to random people, like, who the fuck is Young Clippa? Not everybody lives on Twitter like you. Yeah, that's funny. Oh my god. They're over there, okay. I just don't want to be in the face. I'm going to be over here. I'm not going in their faces. I would like to be pointed, please. Huh? I, I just like to be shown where it's at. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Good yeah. studio for 10 says Halo Clipiverse. Thanks, Trixie, for the 10. Okay. Oh, that over there? Okay. you to take all that and you're good. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna grab that stuff over there as directed by the police. All these copies of Isom. All these copies of Isom. Ungiven out. Ungiven out. <laughs> By the way, it's my understanding too that they traveled a, a substantial distance. And I would say by substantial, I mean more than an hour and a half to be here to harass him. Like they, they don't necessarily live in the immediate area. Like they actually traveled to location just to harass Eric and his customers that are coming to this event. How much would you, would you have liked that in an alternate universe we would have seen Mint get maced on live stream? Oh god, that'd have been funny. Chat, chat. <laughs> burns, chat. Super chat. Give me super chats for the milk. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need the super chats for the milk. <laughs> oh god. <clears throat> chat, chat. Only use text to speech donos right now. I can't read. <laughs> Oh super my chat God. just when the black officer shows up, the super chat just to the N word repeatedly yes. as she's screaming on the ground with mace. <laughs> Some IPTV stuff right there. <laughs> hey chat, so just an update as I walk to the car and I grab Young Clippa's wallet. Young Clippa has been arrested by the police. Eric July just called the cops on Young Clippa, who is Okay. Two things. First off, earbuds, you can use the mic as a lapel mic. 
and typically hide it in a way that your voice still comes through clearly without be catching literally all the wind. The other option is they have mics that attach like even through like the USB-C chargers and stuff like that on Android. And I'm sure Apple has the same stuff. Uh, regardless of phone, you can get it to where it's an actual microphone and you can get like, you know, a, a windsock on there and stuff so that it, it muffles out this god awful goddamn wind noise. Here's the funny thing too, they're screaming, it's Eric July, Eric July arrested young Cliffa. Well, like, they don't even know anything yet. They just assumed it was Eric. Yeah, oh yeah, they're immediately gonna blame him. It didn't matter if, like, he literally fucking pissed in the fucking alleyway, they would still blame it on Eric, I wholeheartedly believe that. It's just standing outside of just a business. Didn't do nothing. Not even... Oh my goodness. Just giving out funny stickers. Not even that. Who hasn't given out anybody stickers? Okay, just talking to people hanging outside. Wasn't even doing. I love how this story has already changed twice in the span of five seconds. He was just giving out bunny stickers. He wasn't even giving out bunny stickers. He was <laughs> they... running up to people and be like, What's your favorite thing about ice? Um, yeah. like, like, really creepily with that voice of his that just seems so unsettling. And then being like, Okay, well, here's a free comic book. Like, you're doing, you hate this man so much, you're giving him free fucking promotion. Oh, man. The Pez in chat. Chat, chat. Should I flash the cop chat? <laughs> oh, she gets maced. <laughs> Put it away. It's, ah, it's so oh, mid. <laughs> Doing the crime of giving a gift. Okay, he's trying to see who wants copies of Isom, Eric July's very famous comic book, one that everyone loves, Isom. Trying to give away copies of Isom. And Eric D. July called the cops and got Young Clippa arrested, chat. Young Clippa is arrested. Oh, God. Okay, I'm not sure what to do in this situation except for to mute my goddamn annoying keys. So, Young Clippa is getting a trial tomorrow, and which is. Sunday, interesting. Yeah. Then they did business. He doesn't get a trial. He gets an arraignment, kind of like what we saw with Nick. <laughs> and she's fucking huffing and puffing after walking five feet. <laughs> like she's like, I gotta uh, mute my uh, stupid keys. It's like, damn. Like, oh my god. <laughs> on Sunday, but that's what's happening. It's getting a stalking trial. I mean, stalking arrest? Stalking charge? I don't know what's going on. I'm not a lawyer. Okay, we're pulling up on the cops again, chat. Okay, cops are over here. Of my cord. I've got his wallet. Hello, I have his wallet. I have his wallet here. I can't hear it. in the stream and call Vic. Oh, I know what he means by that. Yeah, okay. All right, you too. Well. End the stream and call Dick, is what I heard. I mean, I'd, I'd call Dick over Nick. <laughs> yeah, Nick's a little indisposed with his own court troubles at this point in time. <laughs> Not just that, but you call Nick Ricade and Riley will end up on death row. I just... Uh... <laughs> What happened? Well, through the government conspiracy, they said that you uh, you murdered half the people in that restaurant. <laughs> oh, it's my God. He, he did not have intention on killing all of them, just <laughs> Eric. <laughs> there was just, just a lot of people between. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my God. <laughs> no, but I think I think that they say called Dick there because Dick would be the most logical to me because Dick has money. And money can help with any situation anywhere in the world. <laughs> so that seems to make the most sense, especially also because of their close affiliation. I'm sure he'd be willing to help bail out uh, Riley or whatever um, if if need be kind of thing. So I think that's why they say called Dick. That's young Clippa in a cop car. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to go back to my car. And that has been the stream chat. Eric July had a meetup in Dallas, Texas, and because he couldn't handle Young Clippa coming to his meetup, he had to call the police and get him arrested for stalking. Okay, Jet? You see what happened here? 
Uh, oh my goodness, this is terrible. And I'm gonna do what Young Kuta says, because he's being wise. All right, chat, this has been the Dallas Meetup stream. Tell everyone, that, tell literally everyone that Eric July got Young Kuta arrested. I just wanna say that there was a business that called the police, not Eric, so I just wanted to kind of, you know. He <laughs> so she point out that Mint was literally jazzercising like a 60-year-old woman. <laughs> the speed walk pro. <laughs> oh my god. I just, I love that like before they, before she even made it to her car, she knew that Eric July wasn't at fault here. <laughs> How insane must you be that you're screaming young Clippa was arrested as you're walking jazzercising down to your car? <laughs> oh my god. Talked to the business owner. Best. The business owner was like, it's all right. And then got called the police on. So you tell me. And welcome oh, okay. to the biggest. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah? I hate what? There we go. All right, so that's the arrest. So from that, we get uh, Eric July catches the wind of the arrest, and uh, he gives kind of an initial response that we're going to watch first, and then he gives, like, an official statement later on. Some other things come out, so it, it becomes kind of funny, in my opinion. Let me just address that real quick. Um, yeah, it's such a weird thing because it's like, you know, we had Beardo in there streaming, so you had multiple people that were streaming, and people saw how tied up that I was the entire night, you know, I was stuck. I won't say stuck. Um, that's the, not the proper term. I was contained to this spot because I had to meet all these people. You guys saw the line. So um, it was weird seeing that I guess some folks were confused and it, out of what happened because I'll tell you this much. From my perspective and from what I pick up, this is what, what, I, what, I, what I believe happened or I won't say what I believe, what I'm being told that, that happened. So apparently there was a a goofball at some point that was like outside. Right. And remember this is a RSVP event. So it, I'm assuming that they were, it was always going to be rebel rousing regardless. Um, so it was an RSVP event. You had to have your name and all that stuff. We had to have that documented before anybody was going to get laid in either, either way it goes. I mean, you have to do that stuff. I mean, you guys saw the line and we don't want the event to be closed down for fire marshals. That's why we do the RSVP uh, at those events. And yeah, um, you know, apparently someone was uh rebel rousing outside and the uh, owners of the a venue, right, um, told this person to leave. Um, they, or, or they gave him some rules or something like, hey, stay over there past that property line or something like that. Uh, and then uh, they still kept, um, like, bothering, being annoying to, like, some of even our, like our patrons or, or rather the people that were there coming to see us. Um, you know, I remember, right, we got kids and stuff there. They were, like, putting cameras up and people, like, it was, it was weird, man. All around weird uh, situation. Uh, again, this is what I'm picking up. And uh, then at some point, the owner's, I guess after trying to give him uh, give the person a break, uh, ended up calling the law boys, and the law boys um, got him out of there at some point. Okay, what are they doing over there? What are they doing? Oh, you're being arrested? Oh, they're arresting a young Quippa. Oh shit, Chad, yeah, he's being arrested. We've already seen enough of this ear, or listened to enough of this ear trauma. No, the, the cops were just giving him a really enthusiastic high five for his promotion <laughs> of ice bomb. It's a reverse high five, huh? Don't worry. <laughs> what, what are they doing? They're a real fan of Riley's gay ops and want an autograph. <laughs> Chats for bail. Funny thing is, I didn't know anybody got arrested outside the event until a fan actually came up to me and told me that, that that was the case. And I was like, Oh, well, sucks to suck, I guess. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a weird thing. You got some, some people are like, um, you know, Eric called the cops on someone. I'm like, did y'all not see how busy I, I, I was during that event? Like how, how would I have done that? How, how would I have ever had the time to even, even do that? I'm signing stuff. I'm shaking hands. I'm, I'm, do, I'm taking pictures. And at no time did I have any, like, because to my knowledge, there were, no, there were never any cops that were there that were physically in the actual um, event. So it's not like I ever talked to a cop that night or anything. I had nothing to do with any of that um, goofy stuff, you know. So, yeah, that was, for, to my knowledge, all that all that happened. Um, it was it was outside, didn't make it to the event, didn't interrupt what we were doing. And, again, that's a testament to the, uh, I guess, the staff as well as the owners um, ensuring that it was a, a, a smooth a smooth event. But, yeah, man, it's like, 
this is my suggestion, right, to anybody that's out there that, you know, even if you have problems. I had a guy come up to me today that was a RSVP. He came to the event, told me how he felt about ISOM, or, or didn't like it. He liked ISOM 2, but didn't like ISOM 1. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, and we took pictures, we shook hands, we chatted about it. It's all good. Like, this is my recommendation. You know what I mean? If, if there is something that definitely if you want to tell me about things, do things the proper way, man. The last dude that you want to be is someone that's like trying to cause a scene and, and being weird to, to people at innocent parties and stuff like that. Don't do that um, at all. And yeah, just, just do things the proper way. And, you know, if you want to chat about something, as long as it's cordial, we, we're good to go. I encourage that. I, I talk about that all the time. And now, you know, if I'm at an event and I don't care whether it's negative or whatever, as long as you're respectful, man, you can come chat with me and, and all is going to be gravy. So, yeah, just just do things the the, the the right way. But as far as some cat, and I, and I do know that, yeah, it is a guy that has apparently doxed my house uh, before. He's threatened. He went to my, uh, you know, people's graves and stuff. So this isn't just a random, random guy. This uh, probably this guy that don't got it all upstairs. But as far as, um, I guess, that person being arrested, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> I got to say, sucks to suck. And these folks are like, hey, man, uh, Eric Carter, let's fit. I'm pretty sure with all the streams and all that that were going live, y'all saw there was no, I didn't have time to do any of that. Right, like calling cops on I had no time. You blame blame the owners if you want to blame anybody. But either way, what the hell else are they supposed to do? Are they supposed to? Well, what was I supposed to do? Let's assume that because again, I didn't know any of this was going on until after the fact. But let's assume that I did. What was I supposed to do? Stop the event and go handle a rebel? Like, for, for, what, what reason would I do that? But also, you know, of course, you have people pulling the card. All oh, he's a libertarian, all this. Why would he do this? Again, did the cops had nothing to do with me? But I just remember a, a, an event that was not too long ago that. Granted, we got out unscathed that a lot of people were cheering on folks getting the government uh, involved to to do what could have ruined my entire company um, at the time. And um, folks had no problem cheering that on. And uh, that was certainly a wake up call for me. Again, we got out of that unscathed. But what it was was a wake up call, because as I've said before, even on the subject of like IP, who cares what my principles are? What good is what, what good does principles do me? The principles stop the, stop us from getting sued. Did my position on IP stop someone? No, it doesn't. Like, nobody cares about that. Like, the world is the, the world is what it is, right? Um, and I'm going to move accordingly, for sure. Um, but either way, I take credit for it if I if we we should take credit for it. But no, just don't go probably making a scene and making it uncomfortable for guests. Uh, and you'll probably be all right. Just don't be, just don't do that. Be respectful. Be cordial. Even if, again, if it's like, hey, I, I got, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I got some exceptions. I take exceptions to some things that Eric said. That's fine. Just do it the right way, man. Be be cordial, be respectful, and like, hey, man, I'm here. Just wanted to talk to you about so and so. Cool. We'll have a little chat. And we'll whatever. Like, just be respectful. Just be, be be respectful. Don't be an idiot. But yeah, that's um. I guess that's so far. I will say this is honestly like a pretty fucking level take. Like he sat there and said he hasn't discouraged them from coming. He's saying I told you not to come and you came anyway. No, he said you can come. Like just do it the correct way. Like just go through. So that way, you know, I, I, we all know to expect you, you know, we can have the conversations. You can say what you want. Just don't be an idiot and an asshole about it. And that's exactly what Riley chose to do. And at the end of the day, it wasn't even fucking uh, Eric that did anything here. It was the fucking business owner. And rightfully so, you know, who knows what this person's going to do. Especially when you're outside of this. Like, okay, yeah, Eric has the privilege of knowing what Riley has done so far so he can gauge whether he is or isn't a threat. This guy that runs this establishment does not know that and can only gauge on the best interest of his business and his patrons. Yeah, and can I ask you a question? What? Are you sick of the libertarian argument? Yeah. Um, because, I... like, as a libertarian, I agree in personal liberty and freedoms. But it's not anarchism. Yeah, like, exactly. You're arguing literally for like no rule of law that Riley is allowed to basically do whatever the hell he wants to Eric. Yeah. Like I there you have liberty and freedom to a point where you need to like also have rights for other people. Yeah. Because in that society then then Eric is justified just shooting Riley, which you said he can't do. Yeah. Like, you know, like, so, so what is your argument here? You know, oh, he's a bad libertarian. Yeah. I, I, because <laughs> why? <laughs> because he, he right? pulled the cops and he's a bootlicker now, right? Yeah, like, that's what we're going to go with. <laughs> libertarian states that Riley had the freedom to do what he did. He yeah. just had consequences for it. Because if you want this society that you're trying to make 
an argument that Eric's a fake libertarian for. That would be anarchism, and we would have no rule of law where everyone can go and murder and steal to their heart's content because of my freedom. Yeah. I will say the the prevalence for this topic to trigger like actual like insightful talks and speech and debate and whatnot is been way more than anything else I've ever covered. Like we had Vito, we went off on the whole tangent of uh non offending uh predators and how they should be treated and things like that. <laughs> like and now we're talking because of Eric July's alignments politically, like, you know, the the socio uh constructs of our government and things like that. It's just kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Riley, for getting arrested three fucking <laughs> times pretty much so we can actually discuss law. I mean, we've already done more law discussion here now than Nick Riccada has done in the last 12 months. Oh, man. <laughs> leaks from, leaks pay site leaks, are we talking about, Pez? Because if that's the case, I don't think I'm interested. <laughs> There's, there, I would pay, there's nothing I would pay for. Other than to maybe see her get based, like Jim said. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I feel like she's like so mid. I'd want to see how mid she actually is. But I, like, she's like mid solid. Is at that point where it's like I'm curious, but I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like she's like, she's like the perfect demo disc. You you could do... like I just want the one level, but I don't want the whole game. <laughs> you could do the like... uh, technical evaluation and then way back. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Like, that's what, I'm sorry, but that's how I feel. She's the e-girl demo disc. I want just one slice of the level, but I don't want to pay the 15 a month for the game. Sorry. <laughs> and Belinda, Mint is uh, the, the female, the woman that you saw on stream. I, I don't know how to... The young woman that you saw on stream that was uh, screaming... Frantically, yeah, the, the, the jazzercising woman. <laughs> I was like, they arrested young Clippa. Here. What do I do, chat? Do I call the police? Uh, <laughs> do I call a lawyer? Not, not him, but the other person on the other side of the camera that's got breasts roughly the same size. <laughs> I don't know if we got this person that you'll hear. Doing? That's the wind. Oh, you're being arrested? Yeah. Oh. That person. <laughs> see, and Pez brings up a good point, but see, I don't even know if I want to use the bit rate. <laughs> like, do I really want to use the data? Sure, I have unlimited data, but do I really want to? <laughs> like, part of me is like, <laughs> the ISP sees you do this, right? and they're like, you know what? We're limiting you now. <laughs> like Comcast would just be like, bro, this is some mid-tier content, really. She's just autistically screeching about Star Wars by flopping her chest everywhere. Is this really what you're into, you freak? It's like Jesus. Oh man, Jim's fucking Billy Company sits there and contacts him. Look, we've taken money off your pillow based upon the uh, content that you recently downloaded. <laughs> I, I, I just like literally get something in the mail from Comcast. I really wish you you sh I wish you would have been a furry. <laughs> At least it would have been less embarrassing for you. Imagine that a world where being a furry is less embarrassing than pirating <laughs> men's salads only fans. <laughs> Although I'm idiot, still but... curious. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> you know what? Curiosity only killed the cat. <laughs> like I said. Is it Vito's you... cat? <laughs> yeah. Cur I, curiosity I was the up... name of the Q-tip brand. <laughs> if I woke up and realized I was Vito's cat, I would probably off myself too. Yeah, I wouldn't blame the cat. <laughs> you know, the SD from the Q-tip, I would just throw myself <laughs> off the balcony. <laughs> I'm going to take my chances with the mountain lions. <laughs> that's, um, I guess that's, that's all I can say. It's real, I, I get all of what I saw was aftermath from that. You know what I mean? Like that was it. It's funny because Brandon did, I'll say this much that, you know, Brandon did like, you know, he has a way of fucking Brando, man, has a way of kind of like making sure that like things are taken care of. Right. And, you know, he comes up to me and he's like, Hey, just letting you know, some guy causing trouble outside and you know phone is taken care of like, all right whatever i'm thinking it's somebody drunk or, or whatever the fuck um it, it was nothing of it but then yeah afterwards obviously come to find it was uh somebody that was just trying to make it uncomfortable for guests and um 
being loud and obnoxious. And of course, the owners were going to take exception, um, exception to that either way. But yeah, there's a proper way to do things, man. Um, just um, don't do that. But like I said, I think do think the context of that is important. This isn't just some random person, the person that is pro doxing and st- already to talk about going to one of my houses. And uh, in addition to the the business, right, um, and being weird about that type. I'm also going to just let this play through because like these clips are all linked together. So and I do already have them in order. So we'll see kind of like position after position after position on this and what new information comes about. But stuff again, involving innocent parties. You got to understand what kind of event this is as well. You know, we got kids there. My niece is right there. My wife is right there. Like just just trying to cause a scene and you failed. But don't don't do that. Just do things the proper way, bro. Just just. Definitely, if you want to come speak with me, just do it the proper way and you'll, you'll be all right. So, yeah, that, that's all that happened out of that. Never, like I said, it was taken care of. I had nothing to do with anything other than showing love to our fans. That's what it's about. She's what a lot of people would call slow, what some people would call education. Okay, so this is where we get into uh, Kino Casino and uh, them making a statement, a couple statements on Mint Salad where they basically later on catch hell from dick and a couple other people about uh mint salad's not autistic and all this she actually goes on fucking ethan ralph's goddamn fucking live stream the kill stream and takes a uh takes a uh iq test to prove that she's not autistic (laughs) oh (laughs) what's that what's really funny is i wish i had this is that uh, Ethan Ralph actually does worse <laughs> and gets answers wrong. <laughs> and she scores like a, a 120 or something, which great, you know. Um, I'm sure that that number is going to do a lot for you in life. Yay. Emotionally retarded. Mm. Uh, she definitely is. And she was living with her parents into her 20s because, you know, she's not really capable of supporting herself or really working a real job because she's mentally disabled. Well, somehow, some way, she ended up a contributor to the Dick Show. She would call in, and they had her drawing art for the Dick Show. And they had her drawing all sorts of degenerate, weird porn stuff, just corrupting this autistic woman. And eventually, her parents found the disgusting pornographic drawings that the Dick Show people were having her do. <laughs> and they said to her, you can't be doing this shit. This is horrible. Like lolly like, and stuff? And then yeah, bestiality, yeah, like yeah. Throwing- Jesus fucking Christ, we need lolly. <laughs> <laughs> we have an artist drawing degenerate stuff <laughs> now is this the clip where I, andy pulls it up and dick is literally trying to call mint salads father to publicly shame him for not supporting her making degenerate porn i think so if i remember right i think so <laughs> uh, like, yeah man so dick masterson convinced this young mentally disabled woman that she would be better off moving out from her parents and moving into his diddler dax barbie dream mansion which sadly <laughs> she did and then they all passed her around like the fucking barbie dream mansion bicycle to the point where even ethan ralph had a turn on mint salad <laughs> and you crazy. can't tell me she was really consensually wanting to fuck no and the gun and do all this sick shit splitting well, i i really want to know if fucking ethan ralph went truffle hunting on her <laughs> you know what is even more fucking ironic what remember the digi bro thing mint salad beat ralph's ass <laughs> and then a couple years later she gets pimped out to him oh my god Kill stream W. <laughs> <laughs> like that, it's like, like, can you imagine the fucking shame that you have to feel? That, like, <laughs> you beat this guy's ass two, three years ago when he stole Digibro's <laughs> lollicon loving <laughs> Beyonce <laughs> because Ralph decided to show up and be unhinged demanding her lollicon and that's a joke for legal reasons. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> There's more stuff there. But, you know, like, and then then she gets now back with Ralph on Ralph's side now because through Dick. <laughs> Isn't that just hilarious how that works? Oh, my God. The long game win for Ralph. 
It's like the circle of life, but it's just autism. <laughs> like, it's autism, just autism. And deadness. <laughs> like you just picture like, you know, the, the cave painting of Simba, but instead of a Simba, it's just like a really big A with a star. Like a gold star to put on their on their shirt to make them feel special. <laughs> oh man. Well, the guns. Eventually, Dick got tired of her and fucking booted her from the Barbie Dream Mansion. So she was living with Riley and Digibro and fucking Bird and all the Transon family, trash, reject, scum of the earth. And Riley has been assigned as her personal card wrangler. And in order for her to survive, in order for her to have money and food and pay this the bills, gross. this is gross. They've hoarded her out on OnlyFans. So they, there's there's scenes where she's like sucking Riley off, fisting, ri fisting. The worst is, and we have it here actually in uh, folder three. Let's go to that. Sure, now, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Folder three, they actually have her doing urination shit, like water sports. And, and, and this was what she was actually doing shortly before the arrest. And it says, when you got to go, you got to go, even in not so glamorous places. It's the mint salad way to make the best of it. First, she pisses in the toilet, and then she gets pissed on by Riley in the shower, all at a hotel. So this is the degenerate filth that was going on before <laughs> Riley got arrested. And I hate these you motherfuckers. Know, I don't think I'll I be real dick master. Now. <laughs> You're no longer the technical advisor. <laughs> when, I wanted, when they said leagues, I didn't mean literal leagues. <laughs> uh, it's, <laughs> it's a slow drip. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and his people they're the most evil motherfuckers i've ever covered dark in all my years on the show i really i don't have any proof of it aside from like this, this mint salad stuff i really do believe dick does like allegedly human trafficking i think he deals drugs allegedly allegedly in his I opinion. Think he human traffics allegedly i think that he does <laughs> allegedly have sex with underage children like i really do believe all of that like i really do believe that he is a very dark and evil fucking person and he spreads his wickedness through other people and it's fucked. he's a degenerate he's a reprobate he's a swine and i i genuinely hate him and i think the situation that happened with mint salad is disgusting and really fucked up and enough to damn any of these people to hell forever but that's besides the point mm -hmm. uh let's get off the the preaching here we're gonna get into some funny stuff soon i promise that's... but this is how riley got to where he is so if we go to folder one we can see here, well, this is Riley claiming well, that he pissed on Eric July's great-grandfather's grave. Well, real fast, for people who might just be entering this this arc, Eric July is a comic creator who did um, um, Isom, and, you know, like, he was part of Comics Gate at first, right? Mm -hmm. Sort of like an anti, like, Marvel DC, like, we're going to do our own thing and fun. And then um, Ethan Van Skyver ended up, like, fucking backstabbing him and being a piece of shit, so he's like, you know what? I'll just do it the on my own. No, here's what really happened, and it's obvious to anybody. Eric July surprised surpassed surpassed yeah uh what's his name yeah he's been guy with uh, he became he became Cyberfrog. bigger more popular more influential than evs yeah evs couldn't stand that he was glad to see eric july succeed up until a certain point mm -hmm. but for him the idea that he would be surpassed in influence and success by a black man was unacceptable and he needed to be taken <laughs> down a peg so him and Diddler Dax have been calling him the black man. <laughs> I just love how, like, thankfully I'm not resting all of my judgment on Kino Casino here. Like, you guys actually have the full, complete story. Most of what Andy said was correct. <laughs> um, almost none of what PPP has said is correct. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's right. What's that? <laughs> He's black. That's, right. <laughs> that's why I said most. Like, there are bits and pieces, letters, colors, you know, foundational yeah. language. <laughs> the word the. <laughs> the word the, yes. The letter A and the word the. <laughs> Inspired together to try and take down Eric July from going to a church. Like, they went to this church called Isom Ministries and they tipped them off. Oh, yeah. This guy's using ISOM. They're going to confuse it with your church, which led to a lawsuit and all this fucking shit. They've sent fucking Riley out and other members of the Dick Show entourage out to Eric July's great-grandfather's grave. Here it is. Who the comic book character is named after. And it's just like, this isn't this. this isn't normal shit. Look, I wanna... it's not, the idea, it's like trolling, and it's like this badass, like, epic troll. 
Anybody in real life would not approve or think it's cool to go and piss on somebody's grave. In fact, if somebody pissed on your relative's grave, you would probably feel it gives you license to beat the ever-loving fuck out of them until they were dead. Yeah. But we're supposed to go, ha-ha, it's such a funny oh, prank. Oh, cool. pissed on his grave. When the guy's done nothing but deliver comic books on time and sell a lot of them. Yeah. Are they of the most amazing? I've never read them. But... Obviously, they have some audience. And there's fans who more like More of an audience lot. than Van Skyver yeah. and Vito the Pedo have for their fucking shit. And I have some more screens of Vito's comic, by the way, which to show you that, like, like I almost way better than Vito's comic by, like, a long shot. And anyway, watch this. Young Clippa. So the idea is Riley calls himself Young Clippa, which, by the way, get ready to cringe hearing Young Clippa on the clips that we have today. But <laughs> he goes, so it's the Ripa verse, right? Yeah. Uh, young Clippa, it's something like, oh, it's a fucking, um, you know, like a parody. But he goes, I pissed on the grave, but I didn't take a picture because I don't want it to be used against me in court. Now, by the yeah. way, Riley is so fucking mental and demented. I believe he did that. I uh, believe that, he Not did. even allegedly. I but, know. Like, why shouldn't this we believe his confession weirdo. that he did it? He did Cause it. Because he, he was there, and he says that he did do it, so why wouldn't we believe him? And the shit he's done already to... Eric July is unhinged to the point where you'll see on a clip. I'll yeah. do a little spoiler. He bends oh. over like Eric's like talking to a guy in a wheelchair, and fucking uh uh fucking Riley's like, look at him bending down talking to this guy in the wheelchair. Like, what? Like everything is like what even, the even unhinged. If, even if he didn't piss on the grave. How unhinged is it to go to somebody else's like relative's grave, and and like pose with it, take pictures of it? Yeah. Like I just, it's actually sick in the head. And Dick's like, he doesn't like that we trolled him. I don't think anybody out there would like people going to their relative's grave. Like, it's sick in the head. It's demented. Yeah, because of a comic but book. Riley was arrested. I saw a request by some... <laughs> I had to include some some Nolan here for taste. <laughs> I just want to, piggyback on some, I want to piggyback on something Andy said. That Go ahead. If he didn't bend over... You know the argument would have been like he's too. He feels he's too good. <laughs> he's to able to make eye contact with that <laughs> man in the wheelchair. Eric July just thinks he's so much better than a disabled person. <laughs> you know that's what they would say. Someone um, in the Matt Internet thread or in this thread, they wanted a little rundown about who Riley is. Um, so I will give you a little rundown about who Riley is. I don't talk about him because he's one of those people, like Dick Masterson, who any any attention is good attention, even if he's negative attention. Um, but I think we're just going to have to peel the Band-Aid off because I think like Dick is having a fucking meltdown. And when he's having a meltdown, it's good to make fun of him. Um, so the fat retard that you see getting arrested here is uh, Riley. He goes by <laughs> Young Clip on Twitter or some shit. But um, he went to uh, the... He, he went to Eric July's... Um, like comic book signing it was like a convention or something in dallas and uh the convention called the police on him and he was arrested for trespassing and this was him getting arrested they're putting him back in the car and he's complaining about eric july uh, so this guy is professionally associated with dick masterson in some capacity to me he was introduced as the producer for the dick show he is a close friend of digi bro aka digi knee aka um conrad the ex-fiance of amanda um, Ralph, May Ralph, the it's actually kind of a complicated web of, of incest here. So Riley <laughs> is Dick Masterson's producer. He is close friends with Digibro. Digibro was in a relationship with Amanda, who ended up getting married to Ethan Ralph and having his second demon spawn. Um, now that they're separated, though, uh, for a while Riley was literally living with Digibro, um, and they were RVing or something around. The speculation was back in the day. Um, that Dick is involved in drug trafficking. Uh, a lot of people speculate that his Patreon is like a front for like drugs or something. I don't know if that's true. I don't really care. But a lot of people speculated um, with good reason that Riley would get drugs from Dick Masterson. And uh, that was their association. Like he worked for drugs or something. One of the most controversial things that ever happened to the Dick show that chased off a ton of people was that Riley ended up in a relationship with a woman named Mint Salad. And I've talked about Mint Salad before, but Mint Salad is... Uh, she goes by Autistic Boobs now, and she does OnlyFans content. But she was a fan of The Dick Show, and she was a furry artist, and she one time called into the... Okay, one one small criticism here, okay? And and it's not of anybody that we like. So it's it's a big thing that uh, Dick Masters and all that, and Ethan Ralph especially, you know, um, Gun Garden, 
a fish extraordinaire, uh, Ethan Ralph, he sits there and he plays this whole big thing about how she's not autistic and she's not retarded and all this other stuff, but her handle is Autistic Boobs. She gave herself that name. <laughs> yeah, I also like how you prefaced it, prefaced it with, like, you know, we hate this person. It's okay, Scott. We, we really hate this person. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just want to make, make it clear that I, I'm not saying anything against anybody we like at this point. <laughs> it's just, just the jazzercising. <laughs> Look, Look, all right. If I called myself, uh, I I don't know, a, I'm trying to think of something that's not going to offend any group, and there's nothing. If I liked chalk, <laughs> Here, go the other route, just offend everyone. <laughs> just go full bore. Then, if somebody's going to get offended, make them all hate it. Well, like, look, I, I still, go. I still exist in the possibility of the chalk could be made by child labor. Okay. <laughs> well, let's say, <laughs> let's say I like chalk. Okay, and I name myself Chalk Boy. You could kind of insinuate. <laughs> really want to know where you're going with this? <laughs> you could kind of insinuate without without seeing any of my content that I like chalk. So if I was an OnlyFans model and I called myself Autistic Boobs, what things would you surmise about me <laughs> just from that handle? <laughs> That's that's true. <laughs> you didn't think I was gonna tie that in. <laughs> no, no, I was. I'm actually kind of impressed. Now, now I, I, I gotta know. Are we talking like chalkboard chalk or sidewalk chalk? <laughs> all, all chalk. The encompassing, the encompassing world of chalk. <laughs> I can't wait for this dream on that. We already, I already remember the one on the knitting festival. <laughs> The Asian chalk market is a uh, is an offensive market to someone, I'm sure. Offend <laughs> <laughs> <And> the masses. <laughs> oh man, look, I was trying to do something to where I could actually work it into like, okay, if I called myself this, it's not gonna make me look bad or 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 offend some group of pre- person. <laughs> Yeah, but you made yourself sound like a Vito style superhero. I'm Chalk Man. Look, I've got criticisms for that motherfucker because I've now seen some things of of Super Killer, and I am actually offended. Did I'm I a- not tell you it was bad? I'm offended with what he's getting away with with the art more yeah. so than anything. And you know, you want to talk about, uh, you want to talk about like infringing on stuff and like. Oh, direct IPs and all that and copyrights. Like I've heard a couple things where like people were saying it might be menu saying that like he basically ripped off Deadpool. He actually yeah, Deadpool kills the universe or whatever. He actually ripped off Mr. Invincible. Yeah, that too. Like when I saw the art, that is immediately where my brain went. He genuinely ripped it off. Like it's not even like like you can say, like, oh no, it's it's kind of like that. No, I will show you when we get to that. It's like that meme we have Invincible at home. <laughs> like, and it's just super killer. <laughs> I mean, he could have done that. At least if he went with a different color, I could give him, like, okay, he's trying to change it up somewhat. He didn't even change up the color scheme. Oh, that aggravates me. And said, I'm drawing furry porn, and my adoptive parents don't like it. And they're telling me I either have to stop drawing furry porn, or I have to leave oh. their house. And Dick Masterson says... You should do what you want and leave their house. So she did. And then she ended up in a relationship with Riley. This is controversial because mint salad is um, probably legally retarded. I'm not saying that to be mean. She is very obviously mentally deficient. Um, I think that in Europe, she would probably be legally retarded, like to the point where she would be in a care facility. Um, but in the U.S., we have a lower level of legal retardation. Our, in most of Europe, <laughs> it's 70-something is legally retarded. In the U.S., it's 60, because if we didn't have 60 as the IQ limit, it would be a lot of black people who are legally retarded. So we have to be politically correct. Damn it, no. And our level for mental retardation. Oh, yeah, he just goes all the way. You know, no, I will give him that. Like, he holds back for nobody and still draws a crowd. He's funny when he does it, too. <laughs> it's lower. But she's probably somewhere 70 IQ. Um, the porn of her with Riley is extremely depressing. 
Um, it's basically her and granny panties with skid marks in them. Um, Riley ha- does urination stuff with her. Um, you know, if if the water sports stuff didn't uh, the water play, and uh, I'm using water sports and water play in in lieu of what actually it is, uh, didn't didn't entice you enough, Jim? Does the skid marked granny panties bring you in? No, but what does it for me is that he's she's wedged right in between black people for the IQ. So let me tell you, oh man, now I want it for sure. <laughs> oh my god. I know I make the joke and it sounds racist, but it's not. I just love the how it's worded like that. Like, like they'll just wedges <laughs> wedges her right in between like black people and like <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh my I'm god. I'm just surprised he didn't do his normal bit where he was like, We was Kangs. <laughs> and, and like, go full into that. Because that, he gets really spicy with that. I've seen a couple times, and yeah, he does definitely get extra spicy. Yeah. <laughs> like, damn, no wonder he's not on YouTube anymore. Like... <laughs> He has an extremely small micro penis. He has a humiliation fetish of me even pointing out that he has a small micro penis is arousing to him, which is why I don't like talking about him because he's very gross. Um, but he, you know, he's this big, fat, disgusting slob that has a very small dick, and he has a retarded woman that he can have sex with and sell the porn of to make money so he can buy drugs. And this was entirely orchestrated by Dick. Um, he got her isolated from her family. Um, she was a Jesus Christ. <laughs> Between the micro penis and the fucking piss play and everything else that's going on here, I'm now imagining one of those carnival games with the clown and the water gun and the balloon. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> Except all of it's awful. All of it. <laughs> sounds like purgatory. Like... like this man didn't technically actually intentionally pee on her. He just has no function of range to go any other direction. So it's just <laughs> that bad at aiming. He hit her in the kitchen, bounced off the wall. <laughs> like, I just, oh, uh, oh God. I'm going to stop. Adopted. She probably is a, a drug baby. She was probably put into the system from birth because her parent was probably high on cocaine. She gave birth or something, which is why she has a low IQ. She was put into foster care. She has adopted parents, but she left them behind to go hang out with Dick and his friends. Uh, she ended up in a relationship with Riley. They do porn now. He basically pimps her out on social media as like a social media pimp and collects her income. And that's the setup. Riley is very gross. He's very, very starved for attention. And um, he was the one that went out to uh, Texas to piss on the grave of Isom, the relative of um, Eric July, uh, from which... Yeah, Chad, did you see the underlying thread of all of this being urine? Because I fucking didn't. I sure as shit didn't going into all of this. The connecting the connecting arc, so to speak, is urine. <laughs> the comic book Isom is named after. And, um... Yes, Riley has done cum, cum shots and stuff with mint salad, and he has a very small baby dick. Like, it's, it's, it's like real porn. He pisses on her face, <laughs> like, and she's a retarded woman. She's, like, actually mentally deficient, um, and this is all the product of, of Dick Masterson. If you are friends with Dick Masterson, you will eventually uh, have a retarded man with a small baby dick pissing on your face. That's basically the, fa- the fate of all of his associates. <laughs> um, that's an oddly specific thing. he also thing. gets her, like, dressed up in, like, skimpy outfits and puts them out on Twitter. And occasionally, because she says, like, retarded anti-feminist shit that everybody loves to eat up, like, slop, uh, it goes viral. And he gets some attention and he likes that. So that's what they keep doing. Um, so he goes out to Texas and defaces a grave and uh, goes to Eric July's business. They're not public business. Like a, um, a what, what what is it called? Like, a, like, just like an office that they rent out and do work from. So it's not like a public place where you go to, like, meet Eric July or buy comics in person. It's just an office. So he shows up there without permission, um, and he tapes something to the, the front of the store to kind of be like, haha, we're in your space, we're, we're showing up in person to, to your office, so on and so forth. Eric July says, don't fucking come back. He's basically warned not to show up. Um, the convention is on alert for them. Eric or um, Riley shows up, and he gets arrested for trespassing. Uh, let's see the next tab. So Dick realizes that his... Base, remember, this is a guy that he has a professional relationship with. He has known for years... Eric, Riley's the guy. By the way, this has single-handedly one of the best cut little mini videos I've ever seen tying Dick Masterson into all of this shit. Is the reason why I don't talk to Dick anymore. Because Riley was friends with the pedophile Digibro. <clears throat> who, if, if you guys want me to remind her of who Digibro is. 
let's see. Just so, just so we're clear. Let's see here. This is why I no longer talk to Dick, just so that everybody knows. However, I will say this, Digibro. Um, yeah. I don't know if this is accurate, because I don't know the terminology of, like, anime shit, but you are uh -huh. self-professed, uh, what is it, Lollicon fan? Yes. Does that mean I'm... that... What does that mean? It means that I am a huge fan of illustrations of little girls getting fucked. Oh. <laughs> now... <laughs> oh, see, that makes it... You see what you... When you do that... Yeah. It makes it, it makes it very uncomfortable. Of course it does. But, like, I have to fight for that shit harder than anybody because I like that shit. And I know. if I'm not doing anything wrong and I'm looking at the shit, that means I got to be on the front fucking line. I'll That's give it Digibro. to Digibro. Um, he and his training I'll give boyfriend. it to Digibro. He's not fucking mincing words or sugarcoating it. No, no. He definitely, I'll, like, I'll, laid it all out there. I'll what? give it to Digi, bro. He's not pulling a dick where he's like, it's artistic and cuties is this and it's social commentary as degenerate as it is. At least Digi, bro, owns that he's a creep. I'll, I'll, I'll give him it. I'll give him it. Yeah. He actually did that very articulately better than Tipster. And Tipster's had yeah. way more experience doing this well, argument. That's because <laughs> That's because the cholesterol went right to Tipster's brain. <laughs> <laughs> the synapses are not firing in Tipster's brain. Yeah, true. <laughs> no. We're living with Riley and the retarded girl that were direct associates <laughs> of Dick. He, he literally linked all these people up. Um, and so when he sees that Riley is in jail over the trespass, he goes ballistic on Twitter to try and get attention from Eric July. Holy fuck, Riley's being arrested. Riley's being arrested. Eric July got Riley arrested. What a bitch. Tell Alex Stein to go to the parking lot to... Okay, this is the, one of the weird, worst tweets in this. Tell Alex Stein to go into the parking lot to help Mint. She's by herself. He knows. This tweet is fucking proof that he can get up there and he can say, oh, she's an adult. She can make her own decisions. Why are you, why are you like so concerned about what an adult does? He knows that she is so low intelligence that in an adult situation where somebody is being arrested and she's left by herself, she cannot navigate. She doesn't know how to get back to where she, her hotel. She doesn't know how to, how to handle money. She can't get a cab. She's like a lost child without an adult there to assist her to get back to where she needs to be. He knows this. And when she's in trouble, he has to call out on fucking Twitter for somebody at the convention to go out and help her because he knows that she can't do it herself. Uh, fucking sickening. <laughs> Eric July has got Riley arrested. Fake and cat. Former gangbanger Eric July has snitched to the police. Extra girl and love Leela Hart go outside and help Mint. Begging someone to go find Mint before she wanders off and gets hit by a train or wanders into traffic <laughs> or something. Solari, save us. Eric July is the biggest bitch in the world. Fuck this shit. Anything you need. Oh, this is important too. Anything you need, Riley. Hashtag free Riley. The Eric July egging on Riley's in real life shenanigans. Riley's being transferred to Fort Collins or Dallas County so he can get bond set. Yo, what the fuck, Eric July? What a fatherless piece of shit. Hero, and this is a picture of, that's Mint on the right, and that's um, Riley. Riley is literally like four foot ten. He's one of the shortest people I've ever fucking seen. What do you think about Eric July getting Riley arrested? Pig fucking piece of shit. Cross eyes. Own this, nerdrotics. You and your pig wife. By the way, this is fine. I get banned for saying we, like, we can't wait for boomers to die off. <laughs> um, let's see. No, it might be a little Hell bit. Hellhound says, no AC needed, you cunts. At Ethan Van Shiver that's fucking too. EBS derangement uh -huh. syndrome on display. <laughs> That's how I got banned on Twitter for making that joke about all the boomers dying. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's, that's such I, a fucking that's... mild joke. Yeah, no, that's why his Twitter got banned. That's why every mad at the internet, he sends a, a unbanned request. To... Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's what got him banned. They slowly become more elaborate, too. That's the funny part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As if EVS is, like, such an important person that people get deranged over him. It's hilarious. A simp for a libertarian who hate cops right until a detractor is standing on a sidewalk. EJ and Ripetards are cowards. Um, Hackensack says, going to events to stand outside and yell at others like a weirdo while everyone is inside having a good time makes you a loser, actually. Though I get it. <laughs> Eric is bad because he made a comic. Dick Masterson says, you are probably a pedophile. So this guy, who has been crying for fucking years, that I have been calling Christopher Vito Gesualdi a pedophile, a pedophile, um... Is now <laughs> randomly saying random people on Twitter is about a while. By the way, this is loud on Twitter. Me, no. <laughs> um, someone says, I bet Eric July does Riley mugshot merch. <laughs> and even though um, he found this very funny with, um, what's his face? Ethan Ralph doing this. He says, So funny, bro. Uh, and then he's like just screaming at random fucking people having conversations because they were like involved with, like, oh my God, you're friends with someone that got someone arrested. What a bad person you are. 
Carolyn says, I just realized I only took a picture during the entire Ripperverse meetup and was luckily with the nicest guy there. Thank you for helping me plan such an event at Triple D's B. Taylor. And he says, cross-eyed and no tits. By the way, this is allowed on Twitter. but I'm not. <laughs> um, This is Mint, I think? Oh, this is, no, sorry, this is a random person um, explaining what happened. At the... Who are you? Who is you? How are you doing? How are you? Who are you? Chad, nice to meet you. Hello, Chad. What's up with you? Wait, is this actually meant? Oh my god, I think this is actually meant. And she's, ex I think that, if this is the video that I think it is, um, just listen. Hello. Just wanted to see what, you know, uh. Yeah, this is meant. I guess y'all not fans of the Lager. I mean, he did fall, he did false flag Young Clippa's Twitter and got it taken down. Okay. You know. Imagine. <laughs> walking up. Now remember, Riley. She's so terminally on. Riley. What's that? is so terminally online imagine going to a parking lot well he did false flag him on twitter <laughs> justifying that's this to random mean. fucking people that fucking means anything in the real world yeah yeah <laughs> oh come on has renamed himself young clippa because eric july's name is young rippa that's like his one of his street names i guess he's black so he has street names riley wants attention and he's doing what Dick Masterson wants to get that attention. So he has crafted a parody persona around Eric July's Young Clip or Young Rippa called Young Clippa. At some point, Young Clippa gets banned from Twitter. Mint Salad, who has a 70 fucking IQ and doesn't understand <laughs> theory of mind, doesn't understand that not everybody in the world knows who Young Clippa is, approaches random man in a parking lot and starts telling him her plight of the Young Clippa ban as if anybody in the fucking world knows what that means. And then after that, he made videos about how Young Clippa was lying that Eric July false flagged his store, his parody logo store. Bro, this guy is like like he doesn't know what to do <laughs> help me <laughs> like please. this retarded woman is yelling at him in a parking lot about young clippa you don't know what the fuck that means and there's like there's like words in there that make sense like a schizophrenic like we'll say things that, you under <laughs> that words that you understand but in a way that makes no fucking sense to you do you know do you know anything about this well eric july has been lying about young clippa he's been lying about dick masterson Dick Masterson, my, my, my young Eric DeWye has been why, like, yelling. no, he's like me, but 30% more racist. <laughs> I love how there's a definitive percentile there, too. <laughs> there is, there is. <laughs> Alan, not true about Dick Masterson. For some reason, we don't consider it improper to put people who are mentally fucking retarded into pornography if you want to see this girl get pissed on guess what your buddy dax herrera got you hooked up la's finest basically saying that all their all the advice that they're given not advice all the words that they've been saying all the reviews about isom it being bad they're saying that they're lying and also there's just so much that is uh Oh my god, she's stress sighing. She's stress sighing like fucking Christian. <laughs> Jesus, that's so frustrating. I love like, this. The, the stress just goes on about making a Christian. <laughs> she, she's... Think about it. The autistic, for, the artist, like the porn, <laughs> like the drawn porn, the yep. stress sighing. Yep. Like we don't need the medallion. It's living in front of them. <laughs> it is the medallion. She's just like, she's the, uh, she is Magichan personified. <laughs> as a being this is the dimensional merge happening before us that is magichan this is for real this is the rift opening up in ghostbusters <laughs> yeah and this is the precipice <laughs> right here the arrest of young clippa oh, eric july God. is the one bringing the merge happening <laughs> he's created zool <laughs> having like her brain is like fucking blowing fuses trying to articulate these simple thoughts that whying that whying about us and the whying you know it's just like her she can't fucking handle the situation this is so much there's a couple of super chats okay i'm here to read the super chats i'm, I'm here to read super chats i'm not reading super chats is my job my i learned to job slow but now i know it by heart he talks to the business owner the business owner is like it's all right and then this is totally on. regretting coming up to this fucking creature and trying to attempt human com conversation. <laughs> Imagine if she's like, I'm going to read super chats and the first one is just the N-word as she's standing in front of this poor, innocent African-American male. It's, it's like... Ben. First chat is N, 
The next one's I. The next one's G. <laughs> It'd just be like, I can, for ten dollars. <laughs> who is that? Mm, over there. <laughs> and then he just, she just holds the phone down, and he's just shaking his head, fuming. <laughs> just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> so you tell me. Oh my goodness, we got some super chats. <laughs> oh my goodness, we got some super chats. <laughs> I like it when we got the super chats because then I can read the super chats. That's my job. I read the super chats. Job is hard for, for then I won my job and now now I get to read the super chats. Super chats. <laughs> that's, that's so funny. Well, he's <laughs> adding the clapping because I can imagine Mint doing that. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why you be so proud of me? <laughs> I sit here, I read the super chats, and I did my job. <laughs> Not the song. That's my stress sign. This video. And stop telling me about the fucking strike sound effect. I don't fucking care if people buy the comic or pirate it. I don't fucking care oh, if people read it. Strike sound effect. Yeah, shut the fuck up. I don't care if I'm helping the marketing for this ever. fucking book. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't fucking matter. 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 It doesn't matter. Just remember that when you get upset that your friends arrested because you went to a convention and he wasn't allowed it and got arrested for trespassing. Your request. It doesn't fucking matter. So these are his mugshots, and the mugshots raise some interesting questions because he's wearing a fucking towel, and it looks like somebody punched him in the eye. When would that have happened? We saw him get arrested. He did not look like this. So at what point did he get that uh, a towel drape on him? And what the fuck happened to him? Expert um, criminals. <laughs> he tried to use the prison urinal. <laughs> Shot himself in the eye. He had too much of an upward angle, and it just it just ricocheted. Like, I, don't, I don't know how to go without men. I need a woman to aim at. Jesus Christ, how do you guys do this? <laughs> Don't you have a shower? Oh, God, can you imagine him in a shower? That's probably how he got the black eye. <laughs> it's my head, Kenny, that he won't stop talking about Eric, July. And he, the cop just sucker punches him. <laughs> just runs him into the door. <laughs> Oops, sorry, I tripped. <laughs> <laughs> on the Kiwi Farms, elucidated us and explained he got pepper spray. At some point, from at some stars, point it, it, he got pepper spray. You know, as much as I don't like Pawn Stars, that I feel like is no, it's not disrespectful. I, I agree with you. His eyes are swollen because they're extremely irritated, and he's in a towel because they put him in a towel and they wash his eyes out at one of those things. So at some point, um, he got into a confrontation with the police or did. Some you know what it looks like? He got maced. It really looks like he got maced because both eyes are swelled. Oh my god. Yes. And that would explain the towel because uh, OC spray gets like everywhere. And if it's on your clothes and stuff, it'll it'll keep triggering you. Oh, because, yeah, don't they have to like put them in a towel and do like an eye wash station thing? Yep. Oh, yeah. my God. Yes. I think he got maced at some point. Can you imagine being belligerent in his little superhero <laughs> costume and somebody <laughs> has to mace him down? <laughs> well, like, you don't really understand. He, he has false to... flagged me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he had to sadly remove his cape at some point, that means. <laughs> Imagine that sitting in the evidence locker. <laughs> One sweat-drenched cape. <laughs> Reeks of piss. <laughs> something to be spit on them or something? He had like a tart out in custody and got pepper sprayed. Cool. So, I and mean, that has to be, like, recent. Like, between the, the rest and the booking, which happens really early into the process, like, as soon as you get to the facility, they book you. He, got he like, had a proper fucking tart out and got pepper sprayed for it. So, I mean, it leaves up to the imagination what actually happened. Now, remember that Dick Masterson, a.k.a. Dax Herr, a.k.a. Juju the Cow, man who gets fucked in the ass while dressed in the cow, says, anything you need, <laughs> anything you need. I love how he's worked that into just his naming schema now. Like, <laughs> this is how I, I title him. <laughs> Right, like he rubs that juju thing in deep. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Young Clippa, uh, Riley, I got you. Um, so this is meant um, after she was goaded into her um, her hotel by one of the friends of Eric Jala or uh, of, of Dick. She started a crowd fund, which has received two thousand dollars over 50, 50 donations, which is let's see two four four three by fifty four. 
$45, which is half as much per donor as the people who wanted to see who paid $6,000 for the body cam footage of Nick Cage getting arrested. That was like average of $80 per donor. <laughs> um, so I believe that they posted bail for him. He got bond posted. It was like a $1,500 bond, and she raised enough money to post the bond. So I think Riley is out. And she she even refers to them here as young. Oh, bird. Oh, my God. I was thinking, God, you know, that's actually kind of impressive for, for Mint to set up the uh, the GoFundMe. Because she's like a proper fucking retard. Bird is the DigiPedo's boyfriend, tranny boyfriend. That's who Bird is. So Wait. Mint couldn't even set up a GoFundMe. To give you an idea of how properly fucking stupid. No, because I've seen his street, her street. I don't know what their pronouns are. I've seen Bird stream about this around this time. Oh my god. And they're like the most uh I'm gonna insult somebody. They're the most non passing trans person outside of Chris Chan. Like Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Like there's no attempt. <laughs> it'd be like it'd be like putting Riley here in a dress. Uh just a half the size. That's basically what he did there with but with a cape. <laughs> she is. She could not do the GoFundMe. She knew how to tweet the link, but the actual GoFundMe was set up by uh, DigiBro's boyfriend. So Riley's still friends with DigiBro and his boyfriend, and they set up the uh, the GoFundMe. Now it makes sense, um, and I already did that. So that's the Riley shit. Um, I think he's out now. Uh, Eric July didn't fucking call the police on what's his face. He wishes, and Dick is desperately trying to send this into a win. However, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it out. I'm gonna lay out my prediction for him. Um, this shit with with Eric July is not Maddox. Eric July is not Maddox. He doesn't act like Maddox. He doesn't think like Maddox. He doesn't have Maddox's resources, i.e. no resources. He's a multimillionaire in terms of, of value. Um, and he has a, a, a still active support system. His, he has real fans that are independent of Dick's fans. So when this guy fucks with Eric July, he's not fucking with Maddox, even though he really wants Eric July to be Maddox. For some reason, completely unknown to me. I still don't understand the crux of this thing where he really hates Eric July. I, I don't get it. Except that Eric July is more famous and successful than him. And he thinks that he can somehow capture that. But you know, that's one thing I have noticed through all of this. Like, I can point back to saying, like, hey, this is uh, the issues and this is how the feud started. But I can't put my finger on a definitive, here is why Dick Masterson doesn't like Eric July. Yeah, I think Noel kind of has a kind of hit here is the fact that, like, he just needs an enemy. Yeah. The only issue, though, is like Noel said, he he's not Maddox. He's somebody that's in his weight class or even higher. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it, I don't know if Vito is as good of a friend to where he would warrant like, oh, no, you, you and my friend are going to battle. So I now have a fatwa against you as well. I it don't... might be an excuse to get in. Yeah, I, I think like, that might yeah. be some of the basis on the continuation. Like, when he's like, I, I am here to ruin uh, Eric July's stuff. Like, I, I don't mind being the bad guy, because if I'm right, charities are getting ripped off. And if I'm wrong, uh, I just look like an asshole, and I'm fine with being an asshole. Like, I don't know. Like, I think back through all of that stuff. Like, the he didn't even want to review the comic. He got pushed into reviewing the comic. And then he just gives this criticism, and the guy's reception is basically, all right, go fuck yourself. Do you ever notice, too, how everybody that's stood against Eric has done so, like, reluctantly? Yeah. I don't want to have to do this, but I guess I will if I have to. And they're, like, trying to take some sort of, like... Yeah, Riley and Vito are the only ones who had, like, no point to it and just wanted to shit on this guy. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just really weird, like, how Dick, both EVS and Dick, have gone into this, like, sort of, like, I guess I do what I must because it needs to be done. I I'm a man of morals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, you're trying to call Mint Salad's dad because you don't, because <laughs> you don't think that he should disapprove of her yeah. doing OnlyFans and drawing degenerate pornography. <laughs> like, I... I'm sorry, Dick, but that's her adopted parents. I think he's allowed to have that stance, whether you disagree with it or not. Yep. To bring him on air and try to shame him is—I think it's telling. Like, I kind of wanted to see where I'm at in this playlist. Boo, boo, boo. Does... Okay, no. So then we have Eric's official statement up next. 
Um, and then we're basically done. Then we get into some fun stuff. This this basically sure that is going to get us through the last bit of the arc. But when you have to force it by sending people over to his conventions to harass him, and now your buddy's getting put in jail, like you're building a a um the scaffolding by which you're going to be hung. Because Dick thinks he's really clever. He thinks that if he sends retards off to Dallas and they get arrested and they do things that are illegal, well, it can't come back to haunt him. But I guarantee you, in each of these police reports that Eric July is giving, he's mentioning Dax Rara up in L.A. and how this person is associated with Dax Rara. Um, which, if, if, if it doesn't lay the, the groundwork for a criminal case against him, it will definitely help with the civil case. And he's begging. Dick is begging this fucking guy to sue him. So that's also a difference. Like with the, the Maddox lawsuit, it kind of came out of nowhere. I think there was there was stuff going on behind the scenes that was provoking Maddox, um, which I, I still don't believe that it justified suing um, Asterios or his company, to be clear. But there was definitely some shit happening that was like that made Maddox believe that he had to sue. Um, but it came out of, because he was so bad about how he handled it and how he constructed the lawsuit and who he targeted and where he put it. He had no support for his lawsuit. Um, that won't happen with this. It's no. going to be in California because there are no. No, I think it would be in Texas. Because he's in Texas. Texas is anti-slap. They both have strong anti-slap, so it won't be like a defamation lawsuit either. It'll, it'll be like a proper business tort. And you'll have multiple police reports and arrests backing this. And by the way, in case there's any question that Riley is an associate of Dick, um, I am straight up put my hand up. I volunteer. You need you need like a a um someone to say that I know for a fact that Riley was Dick's producer on the show, even if it wasn't like a proper formal arrangement. Right here, I got gotcha. you. Affidavit, signed, notarized. Anytime you need it, buddy. Uh, the the building storm for this shit is not going to be Maddox 2.0. It will not be the lull suit. It'll this is again why I reiterate my point. Don't fuck with Null. Like uh, when you get to this point, like there is no benefit. This man should be your best friend. <laughs> yeah, Null doesn't really get involved in shit unless if he has like a very principled stance he's willing to stand by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's amazing when he does what lengths he's going to or willing to go to in order to get his point across. Like we've already seen with Nick Ricardo with the body cam footage. Uh, now we're seeing with. with... The whole, he literally created entirely new ways to network. Yeah. Just oh, yeah. to keep the farms online. Yep. Like, he is run on pure spite, and I admire that. Yeah, he, he completely restructured the network infrastructure of the of the website in order for it to operate and stay alive. And, and built in an easy way to bring it back online when time was right. Yeah, and he made his own sort of, um oh, like, Cloudflare, like, D DDoS yeah. protection. Yep. Like that like i hate to say it but like you people literally will shit on null but he has i think he, null is one of those people that like is somewhat of an innovator in the tech space whether you like to agree with it or not because you don't like the kiwi farms you have to admit he has done some creative shit well i think that, i i I, I would agree i would disagree with null on some of his hot takes but that's where it ends like with no, like I I respect the dude. Otherwise, like yeah, and I agree with him. Him and Jim's <laughs> stance on the internet. Yeah, yeah. It, it should be a free place. It it should be. It should remain as open as possible, wholeheartedly. Like I just uh, I I don't know. I've got a lot of respect for the guy that goes beyond, um, even just like him. Like okay, let me quantify this. It takes a lot to be a network administrator for a site as um, frequent to attacks as Null's page is. Add to that, he then does these streams somewhat regularly, all while doing this in a quasi-second world nation uh, on, on shit internet. Like, it, yeah. it's respectable yeah. <laughs> for a we lot of stream, aspects. Stream two times a week? Yeah. Is in constant autistic slap fights. Yeah. And he's not <laughs> he's not only, like, administering the site, he's also moderating the site, and he's willing to, like, not just, uh... He, he, he takes a lot of personal ownership in, like... Like, when the Nick stuff, the new Nick stuff came out. He locked the forum. He wanted to verify this was good information before allowing it to continue and propagate on a site. Yeah, It'll be a he proper... does his due diligence, like like with talking with lawyers, <laughs> seeing if these 
if pay, like leaks and stuff their potential authenticity he does more shit on for journalism than yeah twitter journalists we see yeah and i i, I would i would even go a step farther and say that he's more legally he's got more legal prowess than even nick Ricada. and he's more legally responsible yeah because like he says like i'll pull stuff down if it is illegal but yep. until it is illegal it will stay up but he will respect the law like yeah i don't know what else you can say about that like <laughs> No, I, and that's that's the thing. It's just that's where that's where my statement of I don't I would never fuck with Kiwi Farms comes from, is just there's so many reasons behind what he's done that and what he what he's knowledgeable in, like that would just fortify that position for me. Like this man has been in how many like uh um like free speech DMCA style legal bouts and all sorts of stuff like. He's very well versed when it comes to this shit, and he knows what's acceptable and what's not. For me, it's the Zeusadists. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> look, you had Snake thing out there saying that he raped his dying dog and molested his younger cousin, and how yep. did he get behind bars? The Kiwi Farms. They found it, compiled the evidence alongside with his docs, and sent it to the authorities. Yeah, and that's more. It's more effort than I we see from these Twitter people saying this this bad. Yeah, exactly. Not every kiwi is good, but not every kiwi is bad. It's, it's a community. Yeah, it's it's no different than any other community at this point. That's for sure. Or fuck you in the ass lawsuit. <laughs> and it's coming. And Dick thinks it's really funny, and he can you can see the palpable frustration that when Riley gets arrested, everyone just says, "Oh, that's a big fat retard who sexually exploits a retarded woman." Like, who cares? I'm glad he got arrested. They probably should have shot him, to be honest with you. <laughs> they probably should have put him in the I fucking... Um, is it the Rio de Janeiro? The, no, that's in Brazil. What's the big-ass border? Is it the Rio Grande? Is that the border between Texas and um yep. and Mexico? Throw him in there with the, the uh, attack crocodiles. You don't gotta... Like, it, like no, nobody feels bad for him. He went to a place he wasn't welcome and got arrested for it, and then did something retarded and got pepper sprayed. Okay. <laughs> I just like attack crocodiles. Uh. <laughs> oh man. All right. So then we get into uh Eric July's final statement or most recent statement on the matter. Um, and this is kind of where he leaves things. And so this is kind of where we're gonna leave the whole Eric July story. I'll cut this stream and the other stream, which is why I didn't do anything with the other stream. I'm gonna cut them both together into like one actual Eric july fucking mega th stream or whatever like super cut yeah so I, and then i might also do like two broken out points like uh a current history and then a past history and then probably just cut out specially just for you know diddling his cat come on so I've been instructed to give a public statement. That means that everything the public needs to know will be in this video. Thus, I'll have no further comments outside of this and anything else will need to be addressed with our legal team. You may know by now that a crazed man was arrested outside of a recent Ripperverse meetup after trying to cause a scene, heckling guests, and attempting to interrupt the event. He was told by the venue to leave and stay off the property. The venue instructed him to leave and he refused. So his conflict with the police was created out of his own actions and the cop explicitly states why he was called. Uh, as you can see, it was not us that called the police and I was unaware that this was even happening as I was enjoying the meetup inside with the fans. We now know that he was arrested because of an outstanding warrant. So he needlessly created a conflict with the police despite having this warrant for his arrest. That warrant is in relation to stalking or harassment of me. This warrant was issued by the police department near our headquarters and it wasn't due to a singular event. Thankfully for us, this man documents most of what he does through social media posts, streaming, and recording himself. Our legal team has a mountain of receipts. That said, we think it's important for the public to understand the timeline and for some things to be cleared up. At no point have I had any discussion with this man. He does not appear to be a well-adjusted individual. He displays mental instability. He's violent and does not seem to be an honorable guy. Not, not to mention he has a micro penis and has a proclivity for pissing on people. I, I, I like how his <laughs> argument is he's unstable, crazy, and violent, and he's so terminally online he did our d discovery for us. <laughs> so our lawyers have this on lock. <laughs> yeah, this statement's pretty fucking incredible. <laughs>
considering he slaps an autistic woman on his stream and urinates on her for pornography. These are all recent events. For some reason, he made much of his social media presence about me. It started as an odd obsession with threatening to shave me. As odd as that is, I wrote it off, but my security detail began to keep tabs just in case. And as they suspected, it escalated beyond mere internet trolling. Let's get some facts straight. This old video has been dishonestly shared around to suggest that I've invited this individual. Not only is the context removed, it's over a year old. This means it predates me knowing of this person and it has nothing to do with them. You can tell it's old because there's no Blood Ruth or Chadron posters in the background. When I've used the term pull up, I'm meaning to cordially discuss things. When I'm at a public event, now I've clarified this over a year ago and used the term much longer than that. Shops at Legacy, I'll be there. Go ahead and pull up, pull up. If you, some of you, I mean, RSVPs have already been laid. So go pull up to the booth, chat with us, buy some items. If that's what you're into, we're going to have plenty, plenty of merch. Pull up just means let's hash it out. Let's link up. So that can apply to people that love me. We say pull up. Obviously, that's not what this individual has done. What they have done is crossed into territory that is unacceptable. To try to have their actions justified, the man publicly has not told the truth about events. That hat logo that you all see, is the Ripper versus logo. It's ours. This person attempted to, and still does, try to sell that online. It is not a parody as we're not talking about the text. We are talking about the actual hat logo. They tried to sell that completely unedited and Teespring, now known as Spring, busted them for copycat. They did not obtain our warehouse address through this affair. Instead, they obtained our address through a completely unrelated thing. It was not from a DMCA of their own. Since then, this person went online and publicly stated multiple times that they be coming to Texas. They live several states away. We've documented them claiming this even in other people's streams and telling people that they'd be going to my personal home. The line especially got crossed when they threatened one of my employees on video shortly after spring disallowed the sale of our logo. And still, I didn't think that they would do something this insane. This person drove all the way to Texas to our business location, which has several employees working there, of course. They would drive near the front of the building and then turn around during the day. And then they came back at night, stuck things on the window and took it to social media, telling everybody that they do more. So you can understand after that security got in contact with the police. And since then, this person has continued to levy threats on the Internet, doxed my house and bragged about going to my ancestor's grave to deface it. The doxing the house thing. I'm surprised more people didn't go ape shit about that. Like, that's, like, directly correlated to the whole, uh, fucking SS Sniper Wolf and, uh, Jax, Jax Films or whatever the fuck his name was. Yeah, but I think it's because with that situation it was just that. Riley has done so much more crazy shit that kind of overshadows that. And True. there's so much of it, it's so hard to wade through all of it. Yeah, yeah, I know this has been an experience. Since growing my company, I've welcomed many people into the fold. This is much bigger than myself, and I am responsible for maintaining a safe work environment. I have employees and thus their families that depend on it. When someone displays this type of behavior, you must report it. Because if you don't and something happens, you're going to be the one held liable. Even if this was a random person that did this, our security team would still have us contacting the police. Considering the great lengths this person went through and their mental instability, we can't afford to take this lightly. We live in reality, not wishful standards. If someone were to get hurt, political posturing won't help us. I had to have a long conversation with our employees because many of them were creeped out, as you can imagine. They deserve to have a peace of mind and should not feel unsafe. I informed the authorities that I can handle myself and I always like my odds, but I'm no fool. I will treat threats accordingly and fear for my employees more than myself. I will not be the person that mishandled a situation or was unprepared simply because he didn't take it seriously or he thought that he was some sort of macho man. And we've seen their actions. This person is not owed any benefit of the doubt. Even if we didn't know who this guy was, if a random guy did this, we do our due diligence. If you do not have employees, dozens of employees, and a business to protect, I don't anticipate that you will understand the importance of due diligence. I'm not risking my business, my life, or the lives of those around me, especially not for those that have already applauded efforts to have the state weaponized against me in hopes to ruin my business. So let me be crystal clear. The Ripperverse welcomes all respectable people in agreement or disagreement. We appear at cons and have our meetups. As long as you are respectable, you more than likely will get the chance to talk to me in person about anything you want. RSVP when appropriate and respect the other guest. If you really wanted to speak with me, and it's not just simply trying to put on a show for internet engagement, you actually want to talk to me, it's a very easy thing to do. 
If you want to be critical of me, go right ahead. Stay on the internet and troll, make as many videos as you like, but do not appear at my house. Do not dox me or those around me, those close to me, and do not threaten my employees. It's hard to imagine that all of this is over comic books. Though a lot of untrue things have been stated, even if we took their word for it, it's abnormal to act like this. 3D assets, Teespring stores with negligible sales, or not liking a comic book, is not worth getting so riled up that you harass others and risk going to jail or prison. Be easy, y'all, and God bless. I think that was a very fair statement. Yeah, I'd watched that video in the past, and that actually sold me more. Where I'm like, okay, he really does care about his employees here, not just himself. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I mean, and, that's, and that's what told me more on, on going him being like with the whole uh, first thing with Riley at the warehouse. That's what sold me there when he mentions his employees. It's not me. It's the people that work under me. I'm like, you know what? That's a very solid point. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those things where you say, to, yeah, I like my odds. Yeah, I can handle this. But when when does it stop? The guy putting food on his table for his kids. If you go in there and start doing that, and you hurt him, yeah, he didn't sign up for this. Like, yeah, I exactly. Feel like that's and a, I respect that. That's a very fair point. Um, that actually basically concludes everything. So, like, what's your thoughts? What overall, like, who would you side with? I think it's kind of obvious, but who would you side with in this? Definitely Eric. I mean, like, if you look at it, his biggest crime is he made a comic book you didn't like. And to the point of where, like, if you look at it, like, where Dick came out and basically um, called him a scammer. Yep. That I disagree with. You can disagree with maybe you don't think the product is worth it, but that doesn't mean he scammed it. He delivered it. Yeah. You know, you, and Riley has gone too far, obviously. Let the market decide. If his comic isn't good, it'll die out. Yeah. And... Do your thing. Make your comic book veto of your view. You know, if Super <laughs> Killer is so good, stop trying to tear down Eric because you can, you can win. Just make your make your shit. I think you that know? that almost to a Streisand effect level. Even though Dick Masterson disagrees vehemently, um, I think that they have done more publicity for Eric than they have done disservice towards him. Um, and I, I will also add, I think they've damaged their brand more. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I I would agree with that. I think that they've done substantially more. I mean, what we've gotten out of this is that EVS is a fence sitter and will sw play sides depending on who benefits him best. We've seen that now with the Ripaverse stuff, and now I, I mean, we can even see that with Nick. So it's not above him to just throw away and all his morals and change sides. Um, Dick did not have a vested interest in this at all until he had his manhood or something called into question and felt obligated to then do a review on this comic, um, pushed by his co-host who does have a vested interest in this because he's after a portion of that market share. Um, so, I mean, the characters, the cast of characters against him, and that's not even bringing in Riley, which Riley, I would agree, like, this dude, like, look, you know, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, most people would probably side with what Eric's saying, with, like, I, I don't mind my odds, it's not a big deal, but when it's your company or your business, and, you know, like, oh, it's not like it's a small, uh, acute symptom or acute situation I, sh I should say it's something that we can go back to and we can look at like all the stuff that they've done we have examples of other people doing this shit and it didn't work out well for them either yeah and i think by doing this it's sort of like when you ban people on twitter like that just sort of like emboldens their point of view yeah so by doing this to eric you just embolden his audience to further support him even harder now yeah while also damaging your own brand for people that want to be in the middle yeah because then they're not going to want to support you harassing someone so they're going to go to eric by default you're going to weed out everyone except for the people that are like super into dick avid, masterson yeah so avid support but then you're not going to succeed as much no no like and like, I think the one that the only person that had a vested interest in this, like I said, is Vito. And I feel like Vito is also the trigger point for all of this. 
if Vito didn't bring up about the comic being bad to Dick, Dick wouldn't even know about the comic. Then it wouldn't have been on the show. Then it wouldn't have been brought up by uh, Nina for him to review it. And then it wouldn't have also... Uh, he wouldn't have had the critique. He wouldn't have had the comp confrontation on Trashcast. EVS would have had really no way in on this uh, because he was friends with Eric otherwise. And so it just it's a cascade. Like and it and the only person that I can come to a pinpoint on and say this is the person, this is why all this started was Vito. Yeah, and it's also a battle of egos. Yeah. You know, like it's very egotistical. Like, you know, Vito has to Vito did his thing and then like you said, brought it the dick and then, you know, Eric, you know, I like Eric, but he still has an ego and I would probably oh, yeah. say it more deserved because he did succeed but then that makes him respond because everybody responds yep and i would say he responded properly and that he deserves you know i'm not saying that he's egotistical like dick or the other side is yeah but it boils down to like eric has his sense of pride in his business and rightfully so he built it from the ground up like he said he used to like be a street runner and now he's a multimillionaire. i mean take some damn pride in that like he should yeah. he worked up he worked for it yeah you know like you know so like I, it, it just boils down to egos and i think some of them are more fragile than others yeah i would agree with the fragile egos because i i like i said I think a lot of it comes down to Vito at the very beginning feeling shafted or whatever because he didn't get the same support that Eric got. Yeah, and I don't ever think... And Eric, to me, has never come off as him seemingly superior. No. Like, Eric has, like, I would say, like, an ego, but not in the way that he's egotistical. No, it's it's a bravado. It's a response. It's a confidence. It's a confidence. Yeah. He's confident in his product and his people and his business, and I respect that. Yeah, and he has no reason to not isn't. be confident. I mean, everything has just affirmed his confidence. His comment yeah. was fully funded initially. Then he went through and developed it the rest of the way as far as like the art and everything else. Got together a product that he liked, put it out there. He had an overwhelming successful sales on that comic. Enough that he's been able to now produce several other spinoffs as well as other issues. And they have been equally well received, even though there may have been a decline in sales. It's still being supported. Like, it, you know, there is going to be an expected drop off. Like you said, you know, the premiere of something, especially something probably as hyped as his was, because I'm sure, you know, he's probably proud of his accomplishment. So he probably hyped it up a lot back then. Yeah. And let's face it he has what two issues of ice Om and yaira just came out that's three issues and super yep. killers how late and then he also how has the is... uh the what is it the whatever core the police core. alpha core i don't i don't think alpha core is out no it is it is because you can actually get it is? It. oh yep okay. so i know issue one of alpha core which i think is that's the most recent thing to come out um okay. is also out so he's had four issues come out three independent universes so it's like yeah, th two spinoffs in the main series come out when his detractors haven't even released their product after years of delay yep but you see veto on stream all the time yeah yeah and so